to order. This is the regular town board meeting of town of East Troy. It is uh, April 10th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Record show. Uh, we do a roll call for uh, board. Tarkowski here. Wales here. Wales here. Church here. Walker here. All right. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance before we start, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, first order of business, we are swearing in two new police officers, Lisa Kaplan and Patrick Storm. Lisa, you're up first. Patrick 
Crystal. Have been appointed to the office. Have been appointed to the office. Of police officer. Of police officer. In and for the town of East Troy. In and for the town of East Troy. Swear that I will support. Swear that I will support. The ordinances of the town of East Troy. The ordinances of the town of East Troy. The Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. The Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of said office. Of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Okay, uh, Kim, are all our postings in order for tonight's meeting? Yes, they are. All right. Uh, before we approve the agenda, I just have an announcement here. Uh, I was kind of looking through some of our uh, tapes of our meetings, and, you know, we, we follow Robert's rules here, and I have a habit for the last 12 years of trying to keep a, a laid-back meeting pretty loose, but in looking at the tapes, I can see that there's a lot of... Uh, people talking without being recognized or when somebody has the floor, getting interrupted. That's not very courteous uh, or, or anything. So, uh, again, to be recognized, you just get my attention, wave or whatever, and that includes everybody up here, same thing, uh, to make sure that uh, we do that. And again, most of this is just common courtesy, but I wanted to make that announcement. Okay, on the agenda, uh, did anybody have any uh, deletions or anything? No additions. This huge agenda. Bill, you get the agenda. I'm good. You're good. I'm good. You're good. All right, motion, please. I move we approve the meeting agenda for uh, Monday, April 10, 2023, at 6:30, as presented. I'll second. All right, we have a motion, second by Chad. Any discussion? Hearing none. All favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay, now we have a bunch of minutes, and I'm going to take them in the order I hope that uh, Kim presented them in. Uh, Does she presented them in date order, chronological order? They're kind of, <laughs> is that what they are? <laughs> chronological? Okay. All right, plan commission is the first one, March 1st, Bill. So the packet are both the March 1st and the March 15th plan commission minutes. Um, we operate with a split meeting format, so in, on March 1st, we heard from candidate for a conditional use permit, and <coughs> we also heard from an applicant for a, a new home construction variance. So the first meeting, which you have, um, is purely discussion and directional for the second meeting that we had on March 15th. I had just one comment on the meeting minutes from the first. Bill, I don't see your name included in attendees or excused. And it should be were and not was. So it should be commissioners. There was a plural there, and you only had Sealy listed. I had the same thing, Michelle. Good catch. Um, but Walker's not included, and he's also not in attendance. So I don't know what you were. <laughs> have Jim verify that I was there. <laughs> okay. So then you need to strike the S in commissioners and just say Commissioner Seely was excused. Yep. That's the same thing you had? But, yeah, just you that we need to add need Bill. To add, need to add, add Bill, Bill as attendee. Add Bill yes. at mm -hmm. the top after dinner somewhere. Okay. Anything else on March 1st? I saw nothing. No, nothing. All right. Motion then with the change. I move. Um, Go ahead, Phil. It's your meeting. 
I'm just trying to think, that was my birthday. And to show you, I have no social life. I was at the planning commission meeting. On your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> Holy birthday. <laughs> motion. All right, we need a motion then with the change. You're going to make the motion? Uh, sure, I'll make the uh, motion to approve the March 1st planning commission meetings as uh, amended and corrected. Second. Okay, motion second. And again, the addition was Bill as a commissioner and strike the S on commissioners before Seeley. All right, uh, discussion? And the motion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay, and the next one is March 15th. March 15th, with the Planning Commission again met uh, to deliberate and make a decision. Um, in the case of the conditional use permit, the minutes accurately reflect the unanimous vote to uh, the conditional use permit uh, and, forward it, and we wish to forward that recommendation to the board for approval to send to the county. Uh, essentially, we were um, of the opinion that the, the number of bins that he wanted, the type of objects he was going to do. So, yeah. you'll do that. That's, nice. Yes, sir. That'll yeah. happen during your official yeah. report. For this is just the minutes. minutes. Sorry. Yeah, this is just the approval uh, of the minutes, correct. Good. So, um, so you, you have any, any changes? Any changes? I, no. I had nothing. No, no nothing. So you make a recommendation to approve the minutes for March 15th? I, I ask the town board to approve the minutes as written. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay. Then we have communications committee from March 6th. Yep, um, obviously that was a long night, a lot of meetings, um, but it has been reviewed and approved by the committee, so um, I would make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the communications committee dated Monday, March 6th, as presented. All right, do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Chad, we all second discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay, then we have a, a special town board meeting on March 13th. A half pager. I had no changes. Anybody else have anything? Nope. Bill, nothing? Nothing. Nothing. All right, motion to approve. I'll move we approve the special board meeting minutes from Monday, March 13th as presented. Do we have a second? Second. Barb, second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Regular town board meeting um, from March 13th. And I believe the only thing that has to happen that I've seen so far is that we replaced Page three. Page two. Page two, you're right. The East Troy Area Emergency Services District. Okay. I had put in the previous, or the current report. Gotcha. So we'll actually include both of those. Okay, Barb, you had something? Yeah, that was what I had. That's what you had. Let me see if I had any other marks. I had one. I did not. I had nothing else. Oh, I'm good. Good. Okay, motion to approve March 13th. Board. I move that we approve the official town board meeting minutes for Monday, March 13th, 2023, as with the amended change. I'll second. All right, motion and second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. <coughs> all right. And then we had. The meeting minutes from the communications committee on Monday, March 27th. Um, obviously a much shorter meeting. Um, reviewed by the committee. 
earlier this month. So I would make a motion to approve the Monday, March 27th Communications Committee meeting minutes as presented. Second. All right, we have a second. Discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, just one question I have, Michelle. There are five members on the committee. Mm -hmm. Two attended the meeting. Correct. So you didn't have a quorum. Correct. And I checked with Chairman Clarkowski before we uh, proceeded with the meeting. And he I... approved going ahead as a working meeting. Yep. As a working meeting, you said there's going to be no motions or right. there nothing, were no like motions that. Or anything like that. Uh, I thought it would be better, uh, but uh, you had a lot of work going on. Right. And you really see an issue, uh, especially since there's going to be no action items. As a matter of fact, uh, well, I guess let's see. But in general, yeah. we would not have yeah. a meeting if we did not have a forum. To me, if you're going to be making some major making some decisions, recommendations, or, you'd, yeah. you'd want to have at least a quorum. Right. Um, and when you look at our own ordinance, uh, it talks about this meeting and the town board meetings. You need a quorum to make any motions on any of them, yeah. right. any committees, any town committees. Yeah. Okay, so correct in that effect. So, and that's probably why it was a shorter one too, right? Right. Yeah. So. All right. All right, any other comments? If not, on the motion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. I believe that's it for all the meetings, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Bless you. Make sure I got the stuff I want to keep and not the stuff. All <coughs> right. Um, Clerk Treasurer's report. Kim? Um, clerk of support for well, Wendy's here, our auditor, if you want to do that first. first. Um, My presentation? I can sit down. That's okay. Yeah, let's, let's finish Kim first yeah, and then we'll do that. All right. Um, clerk of support for March 2023. Total receipts for $5,420.50. Transfers to March for $678,000. Interest earned was three hundred and twenty three dollars and fifty eight cents. Balance as of February twenty eighth was three thousand six dollars and fifteen cents. Total funds for March were six hundred and fifty thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars and twenty four cents. Checks paid in March were six hundred and seventy two thousand four hundred thirty five dollars eighty nine cents, leaving a balance of fourteen thousand three hundred and fourteen dollars and thirty five cents. Expenditures were high because a lot of our um, Debt payments are due in March. Okay, and then you had your report on what you had out going on, and that was uh, obviously with election, mm -hmm. a lot was going on there. And then you also included the um, election count for every municipality in the county? Correct. Um, I just, I included this document because it's a report generated by the county, and I just wanted to point out that in the town of East Troy, we had 1,913 voters. We outvoted every other town and village in the county. We also put through in this one room more voters than any other polling location in the entire county. In, in, no. That, in that was very interesting to see. <laughs> and everybody and we, spoke. We, the Badger books were excellent. We had a longer line waiting for a booth to open up than we did to check in. check in and parking and fortunately there's nothing we can do about the size of this room um, when the new police garage is built the building inspector's desk will, an area will be moved out of that corner that will give us two more spaces we're still going to have a line on a bigger election but the room is the size it is okay. so but everything went extremely well do you but know what the number of registered voters in the town um, we started the election with 3,024 voters. We had 34 new registrations on election day. Okay. Ms. Buchanan, I, I canvassed a few of the election workers to inquire as to the success of or not of Badger Books. I can't tell you how pleased everybody was. And there were people out in the hall who were talking about the speed of them being able to be processed through the election. 
that day. It was really positive. Thank you. Okay. Now we're ready for Baker oh. <laughs> Guest speaker. Oh, I make a motion to approve Treasurer's report. I'll second. All right. Discussion. Hearing none. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you uh, for having me here. My name is Wendy Younger. I am the partner um, from Baker Tilly that's responsible for your audit. Um, you should have in your packets uh, both the audited financial statements, the reporting and insights document, and you should also have a couple page handout, which is the document that I will use to go through both of those documents at a relatively high level. Um, I know you have a very long agenda, so I'm going to keep my remarks relatively short, but I will be happy uh, to answer any questions you have. Uh, so the objective of the audit was to issue an opinion on the financial statements. Included in your audited financial statements um, are, uh, on the first few pages is our audit opinion. Our audit opinion is really twofold. A portion of that is an unmodified, clean opinion, highest level of assurance that you can obtain from us as your auditors, very positive and the same type of opinion that you've received in the past. There is a portion of that opinion that is referred to as an adverse opinion because the town does not follow the full governmental accounting standards that are required. This is not something new. This is something that has existed for years, but because you don't follow that for your top schedules in the audited booklet, we are required to bring that to the reader's attention. Um, the impact of that is relatively minimal due to the fact you don't typically or have not yet gone to the bond market uh, you know, uh, issuers or Moody's or those type of rating agencies might ask why, but other than that, there's no negative consequence to that. Um, the reporting and insights document, before I shift to some numbers, just want to quickly highlight that. That's the one that you are in currently, yep, with the full green cover. Uh, that document, we uh, share comments and recommendations. We share some of our standard communication. We are required under our standards to communicate any material weaknesses that would uh, exist within internal controls within an organization. Very happy to say the town does a very good job, uh, Kim and her department, in um, segregating duties as best as they can based on the size of the team that they have. Um, there are a few things at your end with reconciliations and that type of thing that there's just the same person who's doing the reconciling that, that does the work and that uh, is something, again, just uh, that happens at your end as part of the audit process, the tax rule and that type of um, scenario. Um, we also include in there, though, uh, the fact that we as your auditors do prepare your audited booklet, so the audited financial statements, that is also referred to as a material weakness in your internal controls because we become part of your controls for a very brief period of time when we do that. Uh, neither uh, that uh, comment, that material weakness, is not unusual or unexpected for most organizations. Um, I do many municipalities throughout Wisconsin, very large, very small, a lot of them, most of them have very similar, if not exact comments. Uh, so again, nothing to be alarmed by, but we are required to communicate that um, uh, via that letter. As I also mentioned, there's some required communication. We talk about the audit process, we talk about um, the various estimates that are included within the, the town's financials, but again, nothing in there is unusual or unexpected. Uh, shifting gears then to the financial highlights uh, portion of the presentation, the, the town has two funds. It has a general fund and a landfill fund. Um, on the bottom of the first page of the presentation, I've uh, shown the activity of both of those funds, and then on the top of the second page, I've showed a budget to actual comparison for the general fund. So I'm going to kind of uh, talk about both of those together because it makes the most sense. Um, so the general fund, when we look at the, the general fund activity, um, we always compare that to budget. Um, that is a required comparison or required disclosure within your financial statements. When we look at the various um, activity for the general fund for 2022, um, the general fund had $3 million, uh, roughly $3 million of actual revenue compared to a $2.7 million budget. So the town ended positive to budget by approximately $300,000. The two largest pieces of that, if you keep in mind, during 2022, you got the last tranche of your ARPA funds, so that was $212,000 of that. You didn't budget for that. 
And then also your building activity, your building permit revenue came in $81,000 over budget. So those are the two largest factors that contribute to that positive variance within your revenue category. Your expenditures ended the year at 3.98 million. That compares to a, a $4 million budget. So you were under budget in your expenditures, which is, again, a positive scenario by roughly $27,000. And when we look at that, that's essentially a break even in most cases, but you did have some fluctuations within uh, various <coughs> categories. You had the fire truck that came in earlier than expected, so you had to, to pay for that. That was $102,000 over budget, but then you were behind on the uh, police department garage. So you, you uh, had $106,000 of um, expenses that you didn't incur there. So essentially a wash, but again, the remaining expenditures were very close to what you anticipated. Um, from a, a actual and final budget comparison, there's also other financing sources. The town goes out, you borrow money on an annual basis, um, borrowed a little bit less than what you needed or what you budgeted for by roughly $17,000. So overall, when you put together your 2022 budget, you budgeted to use fund balance. You needed money out of your savings to be able to pay your um, bills, mainly in the, the capital area. Um, so you budgeted to use $344,000. You ultimately only used $33,000 of fund balance for 2022. So in comparison to budget, a, a $310,000 positive variance for the reasons we just spoke of. So you ended the year at $815,000 of fund balance. Um, that has four pieces to it. $14,000 is prepaid. So you paid your bills in December, for example, insurance, because you have to pay that before it's used. Um, that's it, that comes out of cash, but it's not an expense yet. It'll get expensed in 23. So that comes out of fund balance. You also have $350,000 of restricted fund balance. Most of that is your ARPA money um, that you haven't spent yet. So that sits there, that's uh, 335,000, and then there's a small portion of that restriction that is impact fees. So $15,000 you can collect impact fees, they can only be used for uh, the purpose in which those impact fees were designed. Uh, the third port, uh, component, 100,284, are assigned areas. These are items that are assigned via uh, management. Um, there is a footnote in your financial statements, but the largest pieces of those are uh, employee benefits, monies that are set aside for those of 53,000, um, equipment replacement of 18,000, and emergency services for 19,000. So again, those monies are earmarked. They can always be unassigned. So there are monies that you have available for spending, but again, are assigned within the statements. The fourth component of that 815,000 is what's referred to as unassigned. That's working capital contingency type monies. Uh, that balance is almost 350,000. Uh, that represents 9% of your operating budget. So actually a little bit on the low side. Um, we typically look for that to be 10 to 25%. So you have enough funds available. Um, so should something um, happen that you need to have some resources. So again, 9% of your operating budget. Um, again, total fund balance of your general fund of 815,000. But again, ended the year favorable compared to what you had anticipated. The second column, the landfill, uh, that fund has a small amount of revenue, roughly 13,000, that's investment income on the cash that is in that fund. Again, has some uh, expenses, uh, 21,000, 14,000 of those, uh, of that is uh, the uh, expenses of the landfill. The landfill does transfer its interest earnings out of there into the general fund, and that was roughly $7,090. So the landfill fund um, had a decrease in fund balance of roughly uh, $8,000 and that ended the year with $1.3 million of fund, fund balance. Uh, switching to the second page then, the, the top portion is what I have spoke about previously with the general fund. Uh, just one last item to touch base on. I do uh, summarize the long-term debt obligations of the town. Uh, 2.5, almost 2.6 million of outstanding debt. You borrow from your local bank and you uh, borrow through the state trust fund. All eight issues are um, within those areas. 
Um, the eight issues are due and payable through 2032, and there is, again, a footnote in your financials that details it out by um, issuance. Um, you do have some coming due relatively soon. One came due, I believe, already in 2023. There's one in 2024 and two in 2025. So essentially, uh, four debt issues will fall off in the next uh, couple years. Another item to be uh, that I always believe is important is that statutory debt limit. You have the ability to borrow 5% of your equalized value um, equals $51.7 million. Uh, so that is your borrowing capacity. You have $2.5 million outstanding as of the end of the year. So the difference between that is your additional capacity to borrow, which is uh, $49 million as of the end of the year. So you're in a very strong position from the standpoint uh, if you needed to borrow, you do have the um, capacity to, uh, to do so. Um, I have included uh, my direct line and my email address. Please feel free to reach out if you'd like to talk about any of this in more detail, um, get any uh, information regarding our audit process or what we look at. Uh, but I'd also be happy to answer any questions you might currently have. I have one. Yeah. Um, in the reporting and insights, yes. page eight, these are some of the things that there's some recommendations on, and we've been taking care of some of these as we go along. And one of them is called Established Separate Debt Service Funds. Mm -hmm. I thought we did that last year, Kim. Did we actually? Did not. did not. Okay, I know we had a discussion on that at the meeting. Um, is that a big deal for you to do that? How? That would be a call between Wendy, the accounting people and myself. Okay. Accounting people. Myself. Myself. So, that's, uh, yeah. so okay. it is a requirement to set up an additional fund within your accounting software and then account for the transactions through that fund. Your levy would go into that fund, the payments would come out. Okay. Um, it is a required fund, essentially, but again, um, something to consider. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Um, in one of the uh, recommendations, it talks about the analysis of our assets and then depreciation. Mm -hmm. What is something like that cost? I think we also. Yeah, we spoke about yeah, last, last year. year. It depends. I mean, it's very hard to put a dollar on it because it I depends know. on the access to the records, the condition of the records, the availability of the information. If you have it all and it's easily at somebody's fingertips and it's just compiling it, obviously the cost would be much lower if some, than if we've got to dig through records and determine mm -hmm. what year an asset was purchased and determine what the cost was and mm -hmm. how do we determine that cost. I mean, it just depends on the level of effort. Okay. Got it. And I know when we spoke last year or the year before already, um, you talked about like maybe from our insurance company having a list of, you know, or at least a summary of assets and things like that. But You uh, need a starting point yeah. is what you need. And typically that's where if somebody's going to implement that portion of the standard, they get their in, mm -hmm. uh, insurance inventory, start there, but that's not cost. Complete. Uh, so mm -hmm. now you got to go backwards and find the invoices. And so yeah. mm -hmm. again, there's a lot of work. With not having a negative impact currently, right. the mm -hmm. additional time, effort, and money is probably not doesn't warrant it. Right. Unless, unless we're considering bonding something and we've Correct. never had to. So, okay. That's the only question I had. Bill, Barb, you good? I'm good. Michelle? Good. Very good. Thank you, Thank you Wendy. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. All right, reports of committees. Uh, my report, um, since our last board meeting, uh, we had a Wisconsin Towns Association, Walworth County unit on uh, March 16th in Elkhorn. That was a meeting I chaired. Um, and I had two tri-troy meetings, no, one tri-troy uh, meeting on March 21st. And what we discussed there was the school referendum and the newsletter, which we'll see uh, in when we approve the newsletter that's going out from the town. And then I went to two of the referendum forums. They're really discussions about the referendum. Uh, we had one here on the 28th 
of March, and then April 1st there was one at the community center, and that was the last one of, I don't know if there's 12 of them, 10 of them, there was a bunch, scattered around the entire school district. And the last one was a little disappointing because there was the, uh, I was there, and then the uh, Village of East Troy chairman, there was a school board member, two people from the Vote Yes Committee, and one citizen. Only one citizen showed up for that um, forum, if you want to call it. We, we still had an hour, hour and a half meeting, but uh, there was only one person there. And as everybody knows, the, I believe the referendum was 55% yes to 45% no. Uh, so that will not be an item that we'll be discussing uh, in the future here. So that's all I had for, uh, for meetings. So, okay, Department of Public Works, Todd. Okay, uh, so uh, here's the stack, and I'll just go through them, open them up here for the first time, and hope I remember where the actual number is, because I know last year was in a little different spot, because we modified our contract a little bit. Okay. So the first one I have here is Stark Pavement Corporation from Brookfield, and this is for the various road work, correct? Yeah. 2023 road road bids. Okay. That's the first one. So, find the number. Okay, we got the corporate resolution. Schools of ownership, proposed work. Okay, the bid is $534,000. Five hundred thirty-four dollars. So five thirty-four, five thirty-four, zero cents. And again, that's from Stark Pavement Corporation, and that's for Carver School Road, Stewart School Road, Beach Lane, maybe New Deal Avenue. And I don't remember what our estimate for these were. Do you recall? Six. So we're under Six, with the first yeah. one here. So that was the first one. And you said we had three for uh, road. Roadwork. Second one is from Wolf Paving from Heartland. And these two are, um, I, I call them the regulars because they typically bid our, our work. And do it over the last how many years? I don't know. Long, long Quite a time. few. Quite a few. So again, so Wolf. Wolf Paving, yeah. uh, the Heartland address. $493,909, Wolf Paving Company. And last year, I believe these two contractors each had one job or a part. That was the year before. That was the year before, last year. Last year was start. 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 Yeah. Okay. And Payne and Dolan. They're using nowadays mm -hmm. Kenosha location. Ray Postotnik is still there. He threatened retiring four times. 556,200. 556,200. 
All right, I believe... You say there was three or there was four? Whatever it says on the envelope. It says 2023 road work. That's it then. That's the road work then. Okay, there's four then. They just kept coming in today. Okay. Yeah, this yeah, will be the last like one. <laughs> All right. Last one here is Asphalt Contractors, Union Grove. Even number five five seven zero 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 five hundred fifty seven thousand even. We're going to read them back. Okay, start of Brookfield five hundred thirty four thousand five hundred thirty four dollars. Wolf paving of Heartland four hundred ninety three thousand nine hundred nine dollars. Payne and Dolan out of Kenosha five hundred fifty six thousand two hundred dollars. And Asphalt Contractors of Union Grove, $557,000. All right, so we have a parent low bidder of Wolf paving. So I would say we should uh, have a motion to approve what you want, approve it, Wolf conditional upon review of the contract by Attorney Mills and Todd, uh, mostly for the insurances and bid bonds. Um, we've worked with, actually, most of these, not the last one. Yeah, we've worked with the other three before. Uh, asphalt contractors did bid once other time, I believe. Yep. So, all right, so, where are the, these, either two here? Those would be up there, three. In custody. I'll make a motion, if that's what you're looking for. Second. <laughs> all right, we have a motion by Chad, a second by Bill. To approve the parent low bidder of Wolf Paving, subject to checking of the contract by the attorney and the DPW superintendent. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Seal coat. Seal coat. Fire and asphalt. Only one. Only one. Oh. And they are almost the only. Shop in town, really, for this, for, for this type of work. Scott did not call you. Okay, Farner Asphalt. All right. And they're using the Wanakee, Wisconsin address. Wanakee. W A U N A K E E. Probably two in there, one for, um, it's two different types of materials. One would be with um, a granite chip seal and one with just a pea, pea gravel base. Okay. Can I ask a question? Please. Uh, which one would you, do you recommend prefer doing this? This is just cost wise. The pea gravel will be definitely probably cheaper than the mm -hmm. um, granite because the cost of material. Granite will last longer. It lasts quite a bit longer yeah. than the gravel. Yeah. So it's a kind of a once it catch twenty two, you, 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 you know you, you gain for. you gain it's, it might be worth a while mm -hmm. for the, mm -hmm. the longevity of it. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, he's listing the aggregate as the gray granite. Yep. And that bid is fifty four thousand five nineteen. And that's for Greystone Circle, Greenwald Court. It's a little road, Rhonda Circle, and New Deal Avenue. For the 3 8 semi fractured P stone, it actually got a higher number 57,940. Explain what the difference is. Yes, it would be helpful. Anything to say about it? Yeah, absolutely. There's a higher friction coefficient to the quarter inch gray aggregate on um, the granite, and it is going to hold up a little bit longer. The P stone is a 3 8 inch, so you're not going to get the same high level of friction coefficient. And it just, I guess, price is right for you guys. 
Okay. Right. Your name, please. Luke Hines, Corner Asphalt Sealers, Wanakee. Luke Hines? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Is it a difference of years? As far as the longevity yes. is? Uh, typically, depending on what you use on your fall blades, things like that. So, and you'll have a better melting with the three granite than you will with piece of Okay, um, so I guess uh, we'll need a motion here. I'll make a motion that we go with the gray granite uh, as long as Attorney uh, Mills and Todd go through the contract. Okay. Yeah. I'll second. All right, and that amount uh, for the gray granite was the 54519 All right, um, Michelle, you second? Mm -hmm. Discussion. Okay, on the motion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, on the motion. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. I think I already passed them down, didn't I? Yep. All right. Now. Should be our parking lot. Parking stalls in front. Okay. No, actually, just a parking lot. Yeah. We got. But well, we're not doing in front of the building. That's that's actually part of the road project. Okay, these three are the garage. Okay, so we have four of them. Okay. There should maybe be the town hall and parking lot. I'm just thinking. Yeah. Um, did you bid them together? Parking lot, yeah. yeah, I mean, okay. All right, first one is uh, Stark Pavement Corporation. Whoa. I could, I, could, <laughs> I could not cut a paper clip with the letter opener. Is that still Brookfield? Correct. Yeah. Again, let's see. Just want to make sure it's listed here. So it would be for the town hall and shop, parking lot, and driveway. That's all this, these four are. Yep. Okay, for Stark Pavement Corporation, 102520. 102-520. <clears throat> Pablocki Paving Corporation. Has Blocky uh, ever done anything for us since you've been here? No, I'm not sure because I don't know how big a company it is but as far as being road work. I don't know they do a lot of big parking lots. Mm -hmm. they, mostly, uh, That's kind of why we separate off the road project because there's some people that just do parking lots, driveways mm -hmm. versus actual road work. So what? They're in Waukesha, what? right? That was my question. What they walk us up? Uh, Pablaki Paving is listed as Wabatosa. Oh, thank you. Uh, for the letterhead. Our parking lot needs a lot of work, so it includes digging it out, putting a lot of stone in. Mm -hmm. Left it blank. Free. Free. <laughs> no, they just uh, it did on a cover sheet. I believe that's still proper. Um, Ninety-three thousand seven hundred six. Just want to make sure there was nothing else listed here. Nope. 
So can I just ask a question? Yep. Did we, weren't we talking about doing some areas maybe with some concrete also or to reinforce for some of the plows and no, stuff? No, it's just, okay? it's digging it out deeper, putting in new base and going with a thicker okay. overlay of that. Next one is Wolf Paving again from Heartland. $5,879. They did break theirs out with an alternate, however, for the 10 inch, excavate 10 inches of failing base, sub base. I'm not sure if the other one did. Um, I gotta see the last one. Without actually looking at them. Yeah. yeah uh, yes, so it's one oh five eight seventy nine eighty. <laughs> They did not mention an alternate. Both did. Because you didn't specify that as likely or is that to be determined? Uh, when I met with all of them, and it's really hard to tell until you get underneath right. this what we're going to run into. We had this problem when we did uh, Wilmer Gold Road. They, we did a full depth milling of it and a proof roll, and I think that one turned into like a hundred thousand dollars more. And additional one hundred twenty-five. Yeah, one hundred twenty-five. Yeah. Of having to go in and dig out bad spots and add add the base and everything back. The stream of the bridge had some of that too. Not too bad. We did that on all of them. That's why we kind of changed a little bit on our road thing for it, including the base batching, so it doesn't end up as a a change order, more expense. All right, and the last one is number four. Yep. Uh, Kane and Dolan, Kenosha. 135,500. So the only one that really listed um, above and beyond was Wolf. Yeah. All I'd, right. I'd actually like to talk to him to see exactly what pain, and <laughs> what pain and Dolan's including? Pain, well, at all four of them, yeah. Okay. Make sure that the bid we go with is mm -hmm. going to get the job completed. Okay. Um, There's someone? Yeah. Yep. Oh, Sam. Yeah. Sam, <laughs> okay. thank you for your pain and Dolan. Our bid right now includes a full removal and replacement of the base, the all the parking lot and the uh, the space, the everything except for the parking along the road and the back driveway. I believe he included 12 inches of base course, dig out and replace. Okay. Okay. I know I stood up in front of the town last year. Yep. That fitting by the lump sum on some of that stuff, along with the various road projects, right. having mm -hmm. it listed as yes. base patch and repair as needed, is kind of what prices us out of some of that stuff, which is a little unfortunate. I mean, I don't want to go on a rant here, but I went into the various road projects here doing some quick math. And our asphalt plant in Honey Creek, there and back is 25 minutes. The Wolf's there and back is 70 minutes. At about 5,400 tons of asphalt, we would theoretically have about a $25,000 advantage to pave that various road projects. But what I look at patching on that road out here on Stewart School Road, and some of our competition might not include, <coughs> is where that might price us out of some of it. So that's why, I've, you know, again, just like last year, doing those bids at lump sum can be kind of difficult, especially from a contract standpoint, just reading the documents. Our thought process is we have to submit our bid on your terms, which means I can't really give you something else that tells you a whole bunch of nonsense because I have to give you what you are asking for. So that's where that, that's a little bit more difficult. Now, if we, 
I mean, if it's a little bit more, like even just rough idea of to not include patching and then I include a unit price on top of the lump sum for, for patching, then that's something that's, you know, that's a completely different conversation. Because for us to overlay some of these streets and not include patching, we might be much more competitive. And I know talking to some of my coworkers who've been working in this area longer than I have, we haven't done, unfortunately, done work for the for the town in quite some time. Okay. Even though we we'd like to and we try and consistently submit bids. So, right. um, but yeah, for this parking lot, including the fact that this building I believe said it was like coming up six inches. Yep. Um, we included 12 inches of base course for move and replace. With it was five inches of state approved. Okay. Next, 3LT, All right. What I'd like to do on this one is defer the uh, award of this one until, because uh, we're going to be setting up a special meeting for a couple other issues, until you can evaluate those. In this particular case, I think it's critical that you yeah. do. Uh, that doesn't stop uh, Jim, though, from reviewing the apparent low bidder. Uh, if, it's the, not, if it becomes not the apparent low bidder, then he'd have to review another one. Mm -hmm. So. I guess I'd like to uh, make a motion that we defer. And I talking with Sam and talk with him. That's why I put right on there. You had to meet with me to even get a bid in here. With, there's a couple that I know that usually bid that didn't. Okay. That didn't come and meet. So we talked in depth about yep. stuff here. Okay. Yeah, right. I'm confident in the numbers that talking with you and everything, I'm yep. very confident in our numbers. Gotcha. And I, the other contractors, um, I met with Wolf and uh, Stark. Blackie a little bit, but not in-depth as the rest of them. Okay. They were all told the same thing, that this all has to come out, this all needs new new base underneath, at least eight inches, so. Okay. So any, uh, any issue? I'm going to go ahead. So, sorry, we're obvious. What? You said at least eight inches, and he said it's 12. Yeah, he's gonna, he was going to easel over the yep. one. Yep. We don't have and the purpose of that is because sure. it's, it's something that's true. I mean, I have no problem with, with just putting eight inches if that's if that's truly what's desired. But some of it is a recommendation of what of what we see yep. and stuff like that. Is well, you guys are going to be bringing in something a little bit heavier, five inches of asphalt. That's definitely a step in the right direction. Would we necessarily recommend eight inches? No, we might recommend like ten at a minimum, but. Depending on, you know, if you guys are bringing fully loaded quads of salt and yeah. stuff, it might make sense yeah. to do the full 12. So there's, you know, there's room, and that's that's where I say, like, the uh, the base patch as needed and stuff, some of that stuff. It's like, if, if even if it was just in writing in the contract, we want eight inches, and this is what we want, then that's perfectly fine, but I don't know what my competition is going to do. All I can do is put a bid forward with our best foot to make sure that we give you guys a good product. Gotcha. Okay, uh, Jim, any issue? I mean, we've uh, opened the bids officially. Any problem with deferring the award until a, a future meeting? No, okay. but I agree that you should specify so everyone's bidding. Yep, that's yeah, the same. part you got. Yeah, we, it's, our bidding packets haven't been the best since I took over. Um, they were real bad, and I've been trying to change some of the wording and just kind of going to the bidding part of it. And I know Sam's helped and a couple other of the contractors going to, next time we put this out for next year put this in there okay is this instead of just a lump sum we can break it up okay we need x number of feet patched here here mm -hmm. and here instead of just a lump sum okay so uh, you're either now going to have to award the lowest reasonable or responsible bidder mm -hmm. or you're going to have to redo everything okay all right, so I think that's what we're going to do then is uh, if we have an apparent low bidder, and uh, where's the list right here? Yeah, Pulaki. Pulaki. Yeah, um, and we met with the least. That's the one you met the least with? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Would there be a, a hardship for us if we had to just do it over? No. Because there's a $42,000 spread here on a $100,000 job. Yeah. But I they're not also, talking the same language. Correct. Well, that's what I guess I'm asking is, is what, what is there to have the time to actually read these contracts? I mean, I know we're getting, what, do they specifically say, I mean, not having 
time to go through them because they open them here. I was going to ask about even our first one. I mean, is everybody doing the same thing? I mean, if every contract reads the same, you know. It, well, everybody bids on the same yeah. contract, yes. Well, yes, well, I'm getting new information that 12 inches of fill is good. I was oh, sure, okay. sure. You can say that on any road. Sure. Well, that's what his is saying. Right. That's why it's this small. But then I also so what heard is the low one doing. One of them said know. 10. One point eight. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, again, your recommendation is is that we have to award one of them today. Uh, award is not signing a contract. That wasn't my recommendation. I said you could put it off, but in the future, it needs to be spelled out. And if you did not want to award today, because you believe there might have been some discrepancy, but it sounds like everyone bid on the same. They did. Same form. Right. Um, so I don't think you would have to. Okay. Rebid. Okay. But are you saying we would still have to take the lowest bid, even if yeah. they're not apples to apples? Yes, they're to be responsible, responsible, responsive. And yeah. Yes. We have um, in our packet, you know, questions that need to be answered to determine whether or not they're a responsible bidder yeah. or not. Okay. All right. Well. Um, I, I would feel more comfortable here that if we deferred the award on that to our next meeting, not next monthly meeting, because we're going to have one before then, because uh, we have some issues we have to take care of relatively mm -hmm. quickly. So, but um, I do still think that Todd's going to still have to look at them all in detail to make sure there's no issues. And Jim needs a contract to check. I'm not going to have him check all four of them. Check the a parent low bidder. What did it say on the instructions? Mm -hmm. Bid would be awarded today. Mm -hmm. <coughs> What's our normal language? Well, mm -hmm. Can we get more information off of the contract from Payne and Dolan about how many inches of base they're planning to put down? Does it say on there? So yes. Yeah, he already said. He said or, uh, I'm sorry, for Black. Uh, the block the block. Think yeah, we're ready because that's as Bill said, that's quite a quite a jump. I, I don't think we're does ready it to say go. the earliest it would be awarded would be Here it today is. or uh, within 40 days after opening of the proposals, the town board will act upon them. That's 40, 40 days. days, okay. Acceptance of the proposal will be a notice in writing signed by duly authorized representative of the town. So we still need though to have. Um, you know, eventually action on this. I don't think we should do it today only because of the questions that were been brought up, okay? Number one, but I still also think that the attorney mill should check the contract of the apparent low bidder. That's what I think. Does that only apply to the town hall and parking lot or does yes. it apply to all three no. bids? That separate, they could have submitted bids. different specs. This is a little different. Yeah, those are all pretty high. Okay. What's special about this is the layout, number one, and then the loading that we have here, mm -hmm. not to mention the timing possibly of the building, which we've got to open up next year yet. All those things come into play, yeah. you know. Uh, Todd's going to look to make sure that what we have is apples to apples, like Jim said. Jim could check the contract to make sure that, you know, it's a responsive bid. Uh, they are a responsible bidder. Obviously, the block has been doing this for long, long time. Uh, we haven't probably used them in town. That doesn't necessarily mean that's a, a bad thing. No. So I would say we should defer this. We should have a motion to defer the uh, awarding of this contract until uh, a meeting in the near future, which we're going to schedule tonight. And also authorize attorney mills to check the Pablocki contract. So actually, I just made a motion. Shouldn't uh, DPW also review the contract. That needs to be He's going to be reviewed. And Doug Shield. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second um, to defer the award of the parking lot one to a future meeting and also authorize Attorney Mills to check the contract and also for um, DPW Superintendent Shield to review all the contracts as well as the contract language. 
All right. Any more discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Um, police garage bids. Design build, post frame construction. Where do we end up with the final number of square feet? Seven, eighteen hundred. It's building, right? Mr. Bill. I couldn't say garage. It's building, right? All right. First one. How many are there? There's three. Okay. All right. Plain envelopes. I'll have to read who it is. Tannis Construction, Whitewater, Wisconsin. Tannis. T A N I S. Tannis Construction was gracious <coughs> enough to meet with us here a month or two ago. They also built the uh, Village of Eagles Police Department. Um, we were hoping they would bid, and they did. Uh, 467,000 even. And it's a 36 by 75 post frame building. 36 by <coughs> And of course, the same thing will apply to make sure that they're a responsive bidder, make sure they didn't miss anything. But the, uh, I believe the way they also reads is we can waive any and all irregularities and we don't have to take the little bidder, but we normally do. And it's going to be what's in our best interest. Evaluating three is a lot easier than 12. All right. Glen Fern Construction out of Lake Geneva. Capital G-L-E-N, capital F-E-R-N. Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Flash drive. All sorts of references and buildings. probably be a non-responsive bidder because what they did is they said they'll do the design for 5% and the construction for 16%. That's not providing a number. All right, you want to take a peek while I'm opening up the third one? What, what they did there is saying, we'll go ahead and bid it, and then our fee will be 21% of that bid. That's not what was asked for. Well, what's their bid? They don't have one. 5% and 16% percentages. I guess that was a little bit of a concern when we go with design and build, right? Correct. Are they all well, they using the same factors? The budget has to be. Oh, I know. Third one is Third one is Campbell Construction. Pretty familiar name in the area. Um, location. Looking. I thought they were going to go, but G Campbell. McGuanagal. J. Campbell. All right. Many, 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 many projects. Pages and pages and pages. I do not see 
ratio. Just the percentages. Yeah. I'm still searching for a number here. See one. Let me take a peek. Got another sheet in here. Oh, um. we got a separate sheet. Two copies. Yeah, five hundred forty. All right. So Campbell Construction, five forty, five eighty six. Uh, we gave him, we gave him a, a, a we gave him a target of a half a million because that's our budget. Commissioner, ask a question. Is that all the same like same size thirty six or seventy five? So it was all the yeah they all yes because we we gave him the size of the exterior okay. and of each room. We gave him the floor components. We gave him the wall components, the ceiling components, the ceiling height. Okay. Yep. I was just double checking. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't that many bid questions or proposal questions. Uh, we did put the addendum out, or actually we called it Q&A per contract, mm -hmm. and uh, it had to do with the building size and the, where I said the floor yeah. covering or the wall yeah, covering. I think there was only four questions was uh, ceiling heights. Um, that one here? Yep. Um, ceiling heights, interior and exterior, what the wall finishes were. Is that for um, yeah. Mandatory start finish date. Is the RFP looking only for proposed cost markup or lump sum bid? And then well on septic. And the answer was a lump sum. Mm -hmm. Lump sum bid. So that makes uh, the only caveat I would say is the markup that we put on the when they asked for specific room sizes yep. and we put that in there. It did say building is thirty six by seventy five. If it needs to be slightly bigger to make it work, that is okay. So that might be something to be reviewed when you're looking yeah. at the two. Yeah, what, what that is at a post and frame construction, each of their own right. design, the way they do it, close. they may have a little more or less on the outside of the building. Right. And that really comes down to their system. You know, right. their designer, really, because they, they're they responsible to hire the designer, get all the permits and get everything. So uh, I think we've got a pretty easy one here. Did, it, did I pass one to you? Yeah. Uh, I'll fit that back in the book here and then I'll send you the whole works back. Well, it's all the same. I'll make a motion if that's what you're looking for. Go with uh, Tannis Construction for the uh, police building. Second. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 467000 and also is after turning bills and use the contract. Right. And uh, like... Like Todd, also the review to make sure there's nothing strange in there. This should be pretty easy for your view on this one. So okay, so that was a motion. Barb, you seconded that. Second. All right. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. None. Motion carries. All right. So we'll pass these back down to Jim and the letter opener for Jim. <laughs> All right, then you have crack filling machine agreement. Now, everybody's kind of went through this, and it appears that the village approved it because they already signed the one that we're looking at tonight. Yep. Here. The village approved the draft of our agreement. Um, Attorney Mills did his changes on it, and yes. it circulated between us, the town of Troy, and the village, and the village started with the approval. Okay. So, how everything was written up. So the one I got here, Scott Seeger and Lori Alexander signed. I have an original, certainly. Okay. So, uh, and again, the la the first time, Jim, you reviewed this, actually you didn't have any changes. Most of these changes were, I believe the termination deal was a request of Troy. 
for uh, us. Village of East Toronto. The village. And then the only other change is where to make sure that, you know, because of where it started, who's insuring and how we pay and split the cost. So I guess we'll need a motion to authorize me to sign that. I'll make a motion that uh, Chairman Kowalkowski sign an intergovernmental agreement among the town of Troy, the town of East Troy, and the village of East Troy regarding the purchase, maintenance, and insurance of a shared used Craftco Super Shot 125 craft filling machine from Sherwin William Sherwin Industries Inc. I'll second. All right, we have a motion, second by Chad. Discussion. The only thing, Jim, when you reviewed this agreement, mm -hmm. I, I just noticed in like the first paragraph, it only refers to the village of East Troy and the town of Troy, that it was initially a discussion between the two of them, but right. then the second paragraph, we just were added in. Is there well, any? There's a village where that's how it happened? Factually, I think that's how it happened. It's okay. just a summary of what led up to. Okay. Yeah, I think that means okay. So, uh, all right, any other further questions, discussion? Here, none on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. I'll sign that at the normal. Okay, a boat launch maintenance project. You say it's starting yep. two weeks? Uh, Farmer Asphalt, Next week. Um, at Next week. last month's meeting, um, was awarded for crack filling. Um, I had a contact from Mike last week that they're hoping to start next week. Um, it's just that when they give me an exact date, the launch will be closed for that entire day. Sure. And then I talked with A-Line Striping. They will come in and stripe it as soon as partner's done. So the boat launches will close down that one. And uh, went down and laid out today. I believe there will be either 13 or 14 new vehicle parking with all the trailer spots in the lot. Okay. So once they come in to do the striping, I talked to them actually this afternoon. They'll lay all that out. They'll be numbered. Um, I'll have signs made, um, and I think we discussed last month a cost of eight dollars for because that that way coincides with uh, our parking down there now yep. for non motorized vehicles. Okay, I'm hoping Jim comes to the same conclusion when we look at that ordinance. I believe that the statute will be pretty clear on that, but it's also guidance, so we'll see what comes there. But how soon do you have to make these signs? That's the question. It usually takes um, Adam over at TS Customs. He's supposed to send me a, a preliminary draft this week sometime on what the signs are going to look like, and then okay. we can all look at it. The county well, ordinance goes into effect June or July. Uh, no, this is on the... This is park lunch. The park lunch. Oh, 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 yes, I have that on my report. Okay. Yeah. And you said... You said 13 or 14? 13 or 14, yeah, only laid out okay. I can't remember if there was three or four on the one side. 14. Yeah. Okay. okay, well, in 11C. Yeah, 11 or 12. <laughs> yeah, I did, but when I actually, <laughs> yeah. I was just uh, looking but, at So I can update it. Yeah. You know, by actually looking at some of the stripes that were down there, but today I went down and actually measured it out. Mm. So we actually gained They're the even, yeah. Okay. All right, since we are going to authorize Jim under 11C, you know, to update that ordinance, as soon as he comes up with a number, you'll have to discuss with him before you order them to make sure, you know, because yep. uh, you got to match. Yep. Good. So, um, all right, so that's, that makes sense there. Okay, now the last one is the uh, ATV signs. Now, the county did pass their ordinance on the ATV deal. That doesn't mean we have to, but the question is, is what should we do? Uh, you're saying putting the signs up because we have town roads in the town, they're listed, I believe all of them, right? Or it's yeah. all, right. all public roads. Uh, that doesn't mean by law we have to allow ATVs on county roads, Correct. but, it's, but it's, our, it's our right to do it if we want to is the way I read that. Yep, and that's the way I take it from one of the meetings there. They approved to open the county roads on townships that already have an yeah. ordinance in place. So right. it'd be like us now, it'll be town of Troy, 
So, Darian, Sharon, Tom Walworth. So this would be Tom County, County J, County I, County E S. Is that it? Yeah, a little or bit County of highway I, E S, L, L and J. It's a village in town of Bloomfield, town of Darien, town of East Troy, town of Troy, town and village of Sharon, town of Walworth, and village of Walworth. Which okay. is U T B. Okay, I guess we need that discussion then. What do you think? I mean, uh, we did pass it, and it is allowed on our town roads, and really hasn't been an issue like we thought it could possibly be. There hasn't been any issues. The police took care of a couple of issues down on Honey Creek Road and Cobo Road, and it was one family of kids that probably weren't even legal even to be on them anyway, but I haven't heard anything since. Uh, the question is, the county is saying you can go ahead and, uh, of course, you still got to follow the rules of the road. Would that make interconnection to our town roads better? Yeah, I think yeah. it does. It would, yeah. It would connect, connect us now with Jefferson County that is already open and have been open for like a year and a half. I think it would be more confusing if we did not... If you did not put the signs up. Yeah, that was, that was brought up the county. at one of the county meetings. Because it is now, you got so many different start and right. stop points between different mm -hmm. townships that aren't open versus a blanket of the whole county. Right. And there are, not to speak, but there are spots where they're like you're landlocked too. You, yeah. The county yes. road isn't open. Yeah. They can go from like that side of the, that wall to that wall. Yeah. yeah. You know, in Correct. certain situations. So I yeah. think you know, it'll make interconnecting with other municipalities. Now that town and trail will be opening, mm -hmm. I think they're due to open May first. And Town of Lafayette, I'm not, I'm not sure when they're going to open. Okay. Yeah, there's quite a few roads, like even those few off of Jay. Yep. It's just it's, their road. Yeah. You know, like, if the county is, it does give them, a, people, an opportunity. Okay. Gene. Right? Are we coordinating with, like, the Town of Troy so that you don't go start here for a Town of East Troy, and here for yes. Town of East Troy, start here, and the signs are, like, back yeah. to back? Yeah, because it, 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 say, like, where we take over and split at Town Line Road on Highway J, one side says Town of Troy is open, one side says Town of East Troy is open. Okay. Okay, so it is. Because you have to do it per back. minutes okay. back. No. Okay. okay. And there it'll be open because it actually doesn't end because we continue to the next yeah. minutes back. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you Speed limits? As posted. So an ATV or UTV, do we have to go 55 miles an hour? That's the maximum. If it's a 55, we have, have that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I was 65 in Jefferson County. And I think uh, before it goes down to regular speed, there's an area of 65. And yeah. all Jefferson County roads are ATV approved. Yeah. Right. And the other thing that's really strange about this. And I've never seen one. Yeah. <laughs> at one time, <laughs> at one time, the law said that. That's exactly what would have to happen. It would be posted speed. But I do believe the town would have the right to have a different speed limit. But that may be more unsafe than, mm -hmm. than, than leaving it at the same, you know, as posted. So you're right. And that, Those that, that I've issue. observed on the road typically do try to stay to the side of the road. I wouldn't say they're using yes. the full lane. And even through this winter for ice fishing, because that's kind of how it got, this got brought to oh, the head. Started. There... I mean, granted, it wasn't the best ice year, but you don't, even summertime now warmed up, you don't see them running all over. Like, I think there was a, a stigma that you're going to see 50, 60 of these at a time going by mm -hmm. somebody's house, and <laughs> it yeah. just doesn't happen. It hasn't happened. No. Yeah. Well, you would, you would have known this winter. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't happened going down to the lake. Mm -hmm. The only question I have is, have you checked with Chief Garecki as to his... Did he weigh in on this? I have not. Please yes. check with him. I mean, he's aware of it. Yeah, I'm sure he's aware, yeah. but I would just like his opinion yeah. on that. Yeah. Yes. Jim, any liability concerns? Not any more than we had when we the regular was passing it in the first place. I'm just thinking that the, the, the speed is higher. That's the only thing that's different. Um, I do think it makes sense to do it only because to not do it would be confusing. Chaos. 
chaos, chaos. And the interconnectivity matters. And I don't got, we don't know how many of them there are in the town. Um, there's a fair amount. Um, but it's something that, you know, I'm not stomping on you here. I mean, yeah. I mean, we have it listed, go ahead and put them up, but that's, that's a board decision. And I don't know if, we didn't discuss the county trunks when we went the first time around on this. Um, the county obviously did their homework too. They don't have an issue at all. None. I thought they'd have some reservation. None. So, I don't know. Well, their ordinance isn't up and running yet, so they haven't really received any feedback yet. Right. They were starting the education as the comment was made at the Wisconsin Towns Association meeting. Um, they would be starting their education in May. Right. And, and we have everything to put the signs up because we can move them from some of our interior roads out to the, right. the county roads. Right. Have back at the time, if the county would have been open, we would have put up half the number of signs we would have had to. On their website, they have route maps and a sample brochure already developed. I'm guessing that's part of their campaign. All right, I have to ask a question to the police. Has there been any, any discussion in-house about ATVs on county trunks at all? Nothing about the county roads. I and the four months or so I've been here, haven't noticed any issues with ATVs. They've all been seen to respect the speed limits um, and the rules as far as meeting your age limits and everything like that. Um, you know, some of the roads are 45. I think the highest county road would be 55. Yeah. 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 Short that's section that's of Highway J is our, our highest <coughs> speed and everything else is. 45 yeah, so I can't be pushing for but I don't yeah. see it being an issue as far as the speeds, but. Okay. Part of L is 55, too. Yeah, yeah there's, there's plenty of 55s in this chunk. I mean, I, I'd feel a little better hearing, I mean, ask the chief to give his opinion before we'd act on this. That's what I'd like to do. I do think we have time. If you have a motion to table, huh? Okay. Probably a good idea. Yeah. I just wanted to get it to the attention that mm -hmm. this is coming down yep. as of July 1st. Right. They're going to let the, the municipalities, okay. they want to put the signs up, they go ahead and do it. Okay. So do we jump. have the signs already? Yep. Yep. Okay. We have everything to do. Yeah, this won't well, be a big outlet. I'll make a motion so. to table this um, table this to maybe next month's meeting or something like that. We can probably talk to Chief and get some more in-house what you guys all think. Second. Okay, okay. Barb, second. Any further discussion? On the motion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay, I think you're done. I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Thanks. All right, police report. We have, uh, well, first of all, we're going to give a normal report, and then we have one uh, peer permit that we're going to take care of. Chief is uh, a little under the weather today. So I don't have a poll after you guys. Uh, looks like we had 789 calls last month. We a total to about 2,004 calls from this year. Uh, this is for a couple new officers. Uh, they'll be trained for the bullet and the road also. Utilizing the okay. One question. On, uh, it's just on the department's 55 this year, 22 last month. So that's us helping the town of the Bonneville village of the Bonneville village of East Carolina. The town roll. They never get that stuff. Is there any account? So someone's asking for our help. So uh, there, yeah, all the municipalities work pretty well together. Um, say, the Warren County Sheriff's Department has a traffic stop that they need a second officer for officer safety, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they would ask for us to respond out there, just like we asked them if we have a traffic stop that we have to search a vehicle or do an OWI or sure. anything. Anytime we pull something out of the vehicle, we always ask for another officer and we utilize the other departments for that also. Is there any number on how many times do we ask for that? I don't have that um, because that would show up as an assist department and you'd have to go to each individual department. So I'd have to go to Tom Aguango, Village of East Troy, Warren County to see how many assist departments that they had for our jurisdiction. It doesn't log us asking for that. 
Because we don't even have this broken down by who we're assisting no. either. No. You have to go into yeah. each individual call and kind of tally yeah. which jurisdiction to ask for our help. Okay. Right. Since we're a NAS helper or a, a NAS user? Um, I think because we have you know, multiple jurisdictions around us, we do assist them a lot. Um, county, a lot of times, they don't have a second officer nearby the area, so they utilize us in the village um, to assist them, just like we had asked for their assistance many times in the past year. Just good police. Yep, absolutely. We're all trying to work together. Thank you. All right, any other questions for Lieutenant? I don't. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good night. All right. And Mr. Russell is here. Uh, again, I thank you for your patience here. Um, this thing had, this peer permit had more twists and turns than normal. Uh, and what I handed out today uh, before this meeting was um, another, uh, what do you want to call it, reasons for you know, getting a variance, and as we find out now, uh, DNR looked at this because Jim Mills got into it with the DNR about, hey, we're going to be doing a variance here. You know, what, what are the rules of the game here? So that changed it a little bit, but lo and behold, when they looked at it, they said, you, got over, you have over 100 feet, so you don't need a variance. I don't think that's necessarily the case, but we have somebody on record saying here now that you're, you're okay to have the third mooring, okay? However, in effect, as we discussed at the last meeting, was is in lieu of, and your explanation says it, in lieu of the two allowed personal watercraft, you want one sailboat, okay? So I think it would help everybody here if the approval of it would say, uh, you know, the third mooring for a sailboat's approved. However, uh, you cannot uh, moor the two additional personal watercrafts unless you come back to the town. Is that something acceptable to sure. you? Uh, is there any other news, I guess, you got when you had that discussion with the DNR? Because I thought it was a little bit strange how they answered no, your question. In the past, I have asked for the DNR recommendation to bring the board when we're voting on variance. Um, the only thing that was new is uh, this time they said we don't really give variances anymore. It is what it is. If you don't have the frontage, you can't do it. Okay. Um, and she said, I went back, I sent a letter to the board on March 23rd. She said she took a quote, deeper look at the property and said uh, the estimation of approximately 95 feet was based on loose drawings that Mr. Russell initially provided and it did not actually go along the shoreline. So she reported by using the two different tools that the DNR uses, she came up with um, 103 or 105. Between the two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for using both tools. Okay. I think rather than argue that point, which would be uh, an unnecessary burden on all of us, I do think the best would be to approve that third mooring as requested. And again, what I handed out today was um, from Mr. Russell, dated 3-13-23, and there's more you know, explanations in here. All those facts are still the same, none of those have changed. It's just that instead of being a variance request, and indeed we're, we're acting on a, a per peer permit uh, request. Uh, and I do think that now you'd have it on record where it's located, with the coterminous line shown and showing the three moorings and then if there's a notation added that you no know, two personal watercraft unless you come you know back to the board i think that'd be a fair way to put this issue to bed so actually i'll make that motion second. Oh, second. go ahead chad I think that was pretty close Chad. Mm -hmm. all right uh chad second okay discussion, discussion. How many feet do you have in here? <laughs> um, well, straight line, I was just under 100, but I didn't think it. I guess if you if you do the ins and outs, it's probably more than 100. <laughs> but straight line, I think it's uh, just under 
just a little less. Have we not historically done straight lines? Uh, no, actually, what the law reads is lineal feet of shore frontage. So if it's sinuous, it's like stretching a rope out. Okay, you know what I'm saying? It's so, a miracle, is what you're saying. We have more land than we thought we had. Magic is not free. Right. I, I think the accommodation is satisfactory. All right, any other discussion? All right, on a motion to approve with that one uh, uh, notation on the uh, permit. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, Jean, you got it? Yes, yeah, I'm going to put that in the notes on the front page of the application. Okay, and then also make sure that the 313 request, you can strike variance, but all the facts in there should be in the file okay. also, okay? Very good. Thanks for being patient. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Multiple visits. Yeah. Okay. Got to get that in the right file. Okay, next on the agenda, East Troy Area Emergency Services District Report. Church. Um, we have not met for March. Our meeting is tomorrow, so there is nothing presented or approved. Uh, I can say that the East Troy Fire and Rescue Department will hold a blood drive on Saturday, April 22nd at the firehouse from 8 to 1, and our next meeting is tomorrow night. Okay, do um, you have any comment to fill the board in a little bit about the town of Spring Prairie, or is that something that's in process? And that is tomorrow night. tomorrow night. They did not attend the March meeting as anticipated. Okay, interesting. All right, thank you. Park Committee report, Michelle. Um, I see the Lions donated the bench. I understand that's from their bag recycling. That's where it came from. So, um, I have a feeling there will be a recipe of the future benches also. Okay. Cool. So, okay. That it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Booth Lake Memorial Park report. Yeah, we were uh, we were unable to have our meeting last month. We didn't have a quorum, but I did actually uh, stop by there and talk with Sean and. Um, yeah, the pier and the, the swim boundaries are in. Um, uh, Sean and Bonnie moved upstairs. They're, oh, they're officially in there. Um, and they're finishing the concession area. It's really close to being done. It looks great. Um, it's going to be way more efficient. I mean, uh, it, it was pretty tight space for a long time, but it, it's bright. It's uh, new, some new counters. They redid windows. They've done a ton of work there um, and for a great rate for us all. So. Um, yeah, they're just they're just plugging away, and ready to get trying to get open. So that's about all I have. Okay. When is opening day for them? Memorial Between the holidays. Memorial. Yeah, Memorial okay. Weekend. Holiday to holiday, right? Okay, is that it? That is it. All right. Thank you, Chair. All right. Uh, Lake Lake Beulah Management District Report. We have a last minute uh, cancellation on the March meeting, so we no scheduled meeting. for April twenty-fifth. Okay. Recycling committee report, John. Yeah, you know, it's library. Library. Yeah. Or recycling. Library. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we're going to be completing the annual report um, no later than the 19th of April. That's for the recycling, and the annual report will be done no later than the 19th of April. Good day. Okay, thank you. Anything in the library? Uh, yes, that's the March 14th, 2023 Library Board meet, minutes and the Westfall and Company proposal for electrical work for the installation of the chairlift was accepted. And this is the final piece for getting the project started. Number two, the board accepted the shared librarian agreement for the 2023-2024 year. The shared position with the East Troy Schools and East Troy Library is working quite well. And the next library board meeting will be 11 April 23 at 4 p.m. 
Okay. Thank you to John and okay. Christina. Okay. Uh, communications Committee report, Michelle. Um, so you should have had an updated copy of the newsletter at your desk this evening. Um, just to clarify, what we are doing this time around, this is actually going to be printed on 11 by 17 paper, so it won't be the tiny font that you have here. Um, each section will be an 8.5 by 11 page, um, and it'll again be folded the same size as it was in December. Um, but for double the space, it was an additional like $110 in the quote. Um, so it'll be on blue paper this month. This will, um, will meet again this month to review the mailing list and get rid of some of the duplicates and, and PO box, um, locations and then, um, get it sent out in the mail early May. Um, so any edits or questions, again, apologize for the small, and then obviously we will update on the boat launch where we had estimated the new 11 to 12 parking spaces. We'll confirm with Todd if it's 13 or 14. Okay. How about the fee? Are we going to hear later today to the $8 fee? Well, we're going to have to go to Jim to, you know, the look at the statute and the ordinance and see if we have to change it. Obviously, if we don't have that parking established rate, it's not established now, mm -hmm. you know, we can't charge it unless we do that anyway. So that's going to happen. At the same time, we'll know what the dollar value is. So if it gets caught in time, yeah, we could uh, modify it on here. Okay. And I think hopefully that could happen in a week or two. Maybe. Well, the DNR used to approve what we could charge. Unless well, if we if we're not charging what they're recommending or any time, any time. Okay. I believe. I thought that um, we just couldn't go over their max. I, I didn't think they had to approve. I thought it just couldn't go over their max. Mm -hmm. That yeah. could be, but this is uh, well, would still be for use of the bull barn. Right. So it's not yeah. a municipal parking lot open no more. Yeah, that's NR one ninety one and. I thought it said not to exceed, but to whatever exceed. it is, yeah. Jim will verify that. Yeah. So, like I think everything in here is stuff that we needed to uh, inform people on. Did anybody have any comment on the updates? I think they're, oh. they're all good. It's a lot. Yeah, we had a lot of comment. The only other change was um, we were going to modify the pictures under the waste and recycling. Um, to be sure to include the sign that you can see from the road when you drive by, oh, okay. as opposed to kind of two versions of the same picture there. Yeah, because this sign is the one up by the gate. Right. There's another one by at the, road. at the road. That's the one we wanted to make sure that we include. Okay. What's, what's the approximate circulation and cost? Um, the post. Last time was seven hundred and forty-four dollars and ninety cents. Um, I believe it was around twenty-three hundred, twenty-four hundred. Um, but like I said, we're clearing, you know, re recalculating the number of addresses. Yeah. yeah. Was that with the money? Yeah. Um, the newsletter. I think we actually used I don't the remember. budget. We set a budget for the communications committee. Yeah, but only twenty five hundred dollars. Right. So. Yeah. Right. Who's the printer? I'm oh, sorry, Kim. Kim. I was in the edit comments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in the update from the communication committee, mm -hmm. in the second paragraph, the communication committee should be capitalized. Oh, CC. In the Blue Lake Memorial Park Board section. Mm -hmm. Besides kayak rentals, we're going to be adding paddle boards this year. I thought that was exciting. mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that in the boat launch, the Lakeville boat launch section, that it really needs to be emphasized because you down in the corner, you have parking launch receipt must be prominently displayed on the dash of the vehicle. Yep. It needs to be in the lower left hand corner of the driver's side. That's imperative. So that language should be added. 
Lower left driver's side. Lower left corner of driver's side. Otherwise, the officers can't always see it. And then people get parking tickets and they're not Okay. And only other comment I had, my personal opinion is that because we just had an election, that every board member should be listed with their email address on every newsletter. I mean, it just, if it, if it could be, if there would be room to put, like, what committees people are in, that would be ideal. So I can look at my newsletter and go, oh, I have a question about Blue Lake. I need to talk to Supervisor Wales. I have a question about the park. I need to talk to Supervisor Reyes. I have a question about planning commission. I need to talk to Supervisor Walker. I need, I, you know, I have a question about the fire department. I need to contact the Supervisor Church. But I just think that everybody should be listed on there. We are because all listed this, on the website. Right? Yes. On we're the all website. Listed. But we're the reason listed. why we're doing a newsletter is so the people that don't have it. Yeah. Sure that yeah. that you probably don't have room this, this month. No. Or just but mm -hmm. so in the election, all of the board members are but named. Not their right. So really needs to be there. So maybe in that box next to the mailing address, we could fit it in. Yeah. At least would, like the board members and their email address. I, I just think it's a really good idea. We may be able to. And maybe time. like in a future um, newsletter, you do like, you know, what everybody's kind of job is. Mm -hmm. Because that, you know, then you I mean, don't I'm not going to contact mm -hmm. Barb about Blue Plague. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to contact Chad about the planning question. It just, you know, and we of course, talk about everybody can talk to Joe because he knows everything. But <laughs> and we did talk about updating the website with more of that information as well. Yeah. As, as we were reviewing this today, we're like, yeah, and we should make sure that the website also has some of those special committee so um, see it. that you guys are involved in <coughs> so that I mean, it, yeah. And you all wear a lot of hats, so it just, then people know which resource to go to. Okay. Yep. I do have a couple of things, mm -hmm. just throw sure. and I didn't read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I just noticed in the update from the communication committee, um, we're in the bottom of the first paragraph, in the second column, mm -hmm. you've got Jen Olson, comma, the town clerk of court. Mm -hmm. There should be a comma after that. Mm -hmm. Clerk of court. After court. Clerk of court. After court. Mm -hmm. So it reads, thankful for Jen Olson, mm -hmm. the town clerk of court, comma, who is the person behind the town website. Fire would be a better judge of that as yes. a journalist. Is it officially and court or courts, Jim? Court. Court. Courts. Court. Court. We only have one court. court. One the court. Thing, okay. other thing, and I know this has been a, a real serious point of concern for everybody, in the bottom last sentence of the second paragraph, all meetings are posted on the town website and are open to the public. Mm -hmm. I would say we try to have all meetings posted. Because last week, we didn't have power for like two hours on Friday. So if that would be a time that something would come in and then we get busy with something else, it's just like making that a policy it, that we try to get it on there. But we don't know when we're not gonna have power. And it was weird on Thursday. Nothing was going on. Nothing was going on. So something must have happened somewhere, but we didn't have power for like two hours. So that's just a suggestion. You don't have to do mm -hmm. it, but um, because they might not all be posted, we try to post everything. I think we discussed so it last month. You said you know a good plan of attack is that's always to do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Best practices. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You're gonna do it, and you still are so, doing it. But that's up to you. you okay. want to I get or we could add the word generally. Yeah. Yeah. Or typically, all mm -hmm. meetings are posted. I mean, we really try to do that, but mm -hmm. if we get something, you know, I know one day I got a, a notice of the quorum for what was that fire we just asked for it for, the, and it was late in the day. That, the fire district. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else with co comments on the content? Barb? I did. Under Booth Lake, second paragraph, uh, second sentence, I think it would flow better if you wrote U2TOO could serve the community. 
instead of you could you serve, too could you be. too could could be a part of it. I think it just fits yeah. better. Yeah. My only comment. Bill, you got something? I, I'm, I'm sure this will be taken care of, Michelle, but right now when you open it, it's mm -hmm. upside down. Sure oh, that was, oh, yeah, that was local. Just last minute one <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Who was the printer? Uh, Minuteman Press in Burlington. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just ran this off quick at the. Right. It was late in the day. Yeah. Sorry, Bill. Pack and ship is more expensive than in? Pack and ship was non responsive. Mm -hmm. Could not get a quote hmm. for okay. several months last year. Well, okay. All right. Anybody else? Bill, you good? Yes. So with that, I would uh, make a motion to approve the May newsletter with the edits recorded um, for distribution, All right, for print and distribution. Second. And mailing. Okay, Barb, second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. okay, and the rest of your stuff must be your line items, right? Um, anything else in, no? I guess we're going to talk more about the YouTube, YouTube and Facebook Live. And on unfinished? Yep, business. unfinished. Yep. So you're good then? I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Planning Commission report. Uh, there's two items listed, and one of them, I believe, the number two. Uh, there's a representative <coughs> for the one on Austin Street, and public comments doesn't occur until after this, but he's here for that item. If the board would like to allow him to speak, we should make a motion. So moved. <coughs> second. Uh, Barb, second. Uh, okay, on the motion, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, Bill, you got the floor for uh, two items? Well, I do. And so for the, the first is a conditional use permit for um, parcel number PET21000008. Located at 4D. 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 Uh, property is located at North 8416 County Road BS in the township. The applicants are James and Natalie Cheesro, the owners and applicants. So their condition of use was um, reference to us from the county uh, zoning agent um, asking for some clarity as to what products the landscaping business would have and how many and approximate size. So at our first meeting in March, as the minutes indicate, was give and take in terms of those three, for those three items. Um, then he, the, we asked Mr. Chico to come back with a drawing, which he did from a site plan created by V2G surveying this delineates location, size, and the materials that would be stored at the landscaping business, which would satisfy all of the requests that the planning commissioners made. And in turn, there was a unanimous 7-0 vote uh, approving the conditional use permit for your consideration. So that's your motion? Yes. Second. Yeah. Barb, second. Discussion? This is at the uh, Roma's Restaurant Correct. property. Mm -hmm. Okay. And discussion. I think they've done a really good job of making it look neat and They're presentable. Remodeling it and cleaning it up. <clears throat> I drive by it every at least twice a day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the motion. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed. None. Motion carries. Second item before you, as outlined in the minutes previously approved, is a variance request for vacant lot on Austin Road. PET 7000010A1 section southeast 7 
backslash four backslash eighteen. Mr. Scott Leibner, uh, owner applicant. Um, so again, split meeting format. Uh, we had a discussion about the location of the house, and I want to give you each uh, a picture of where the setback issue is. So we have a house on Austin Road. Uh, the request is for a variance uh, to 60 feet from the ordinance requirement of 75 feet. The commissioners uh, rejected the variance or denied the variance on a seven to zero a vote. The commissioners felt that the three criteria for the hardship were not met. Um, they felt that the unique property limitations <coughs> were met, that there did not appear to be a public harm, uh, but the necessary hardships uh, did not, were not satisfied in the commissioner's opinion. Um, that the, the building envelope had other, op had other options rather than having this house and garage go 15 feet into the 75 foot setback. Okay. So we voted to deny. All right, so point of information on this. Again, the town is advisory to the county on a variance request. Okay. So they can accept our recommendation or reject it. Uh, uh, argument could be made that if the town rejects it, it kind of leans the county into a direction, but I haven't seen that personally. I, I don't think it has a huge effect, but it does have an effect. So, do uh, you represent the property owner? Yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Attorney Ron English, Hippenmeyer Riley, 720 Clinton Street, C L I N T O N, Waukesha, Wisconsin, 53187. I'm here for the applicant owner, Scott Wiedner. As um, the supervisor indicated, this is for a variance setback. We're asking for 15 feet. The 15 feet, as you can see in the depiction, um, doesn't cover the entire length of the structure, so it's not 15 feet continuous. Um, I have some additional pictures I can hand out to the board. This property is located on Austin Road. It's um, connected to Lake Beulah via channel uh, known as Goat Island is the interior portion, if you might be familiar. Uh, Austin Road runs, I believe, north-south. It's a fairly narrow road. I want to say it measures a little over 12 uh, feet. Based on our research, um, Austin Road, when it was originally platted, was platted differently than where it's physically located. So when these properties were laid out, Austin Road, as platted, was different. Austin Road was then paved and where you see it now, and then it was re-platted from what we could tell. So just from a layout standpoint, that changes the nature of it in terms of the setback from the road. We then have the 75-foot setback from the high water mark. We're asking to go 15 feet in that. Um, there's areas of this property that have a 20 degree slope, plus or minus. Um, it's a very unique property. I know that it's not topographical, the drawing you have in front of you, but it slopes very sharply towards the water. Um, so there's a uniqueness to this property in and of itself. <coughs> Additionally, the hardship kind of thing. I know that's where I was not in front of the plan commission, but I know that's where the plan commission really um, focused on. So with the hardship, what we're looking for is does it provide a reasonable use, the property that is currently situated with the um, restrictions or the current zoning and setbacks? And that's the focus on the word reasonable. So as we lay this out, there really isn't any space for there to be any type of driveway into the garage. So parking cars. Austin Road's already a very narrow road. Um, you drive a truck, let's say the truck is approximately 20 feet long. You have to turn into this property, park into a driveway. and so. That's one of the reasons why, and actually, if built, the garage would probably move back closer towards that 60-foot setback line. In addition, if we were to construct a ranch structure on this, to so say, let's say, make it ADA compliant or kind of have those issues, 
Um, you wouldn't have much square footage space at all with the 75 foot setback. If you draw that line, it's very narrow. And when you consider the road setback, you're not really left with much buildable space. Um, I believe this lot's always been taxed as a buildable residential lot. Um, and really, so we think that there's grounds for the hardship in that. Additionally, there are other properties, neighboring properties to this one um, that are much closer to the lake than what we're requesting. Um, in the pictures I handed out, there's what looks like a yellow house. That's approximately 20 to 18 feet from the high water mark, from what we could tell. Um, there's also a property on Beulah Heights. Um, that's W2170. I want to say they were last in front of the board in 2017 for some variances. That property, I know the property a little bit. I want to say um, that's probably only about 10 or 15 feet from the high water mark. It's literally right on the water. And this board did grant variances back in 2017. Um, for reference purposes, if you're going down Vila Heights, there's a large hill. Before you go up over the hill, over the culvert, it's the first house on the, that'd be the south. Um, when you go down that road, the road would be the heights. So we think that there is no reasonable use with the 75 foot for the structure. We're not infringing too far um, on that 60 foot setback. And we think it's a reasonable request considering the neighboring properties. So um, we think we meet all the criteria for a variance. Um, as the chairman noted, is, is advisory to the, to the county, but at the same time, we would like the approval of the board. Happy to answer any questions. The owner applicants here as well to answer any. Okay. I do have one. Um, the square footage listed on the drawing, it's listed as like 1,500 square feet as first floor. Uh, what is then the 2864 square foot footprint? What's the difference? Does that include the deck and garage? That what? would be if we went into a two story home. Okay. We're trying to keep it, even if we do, if we have to do a two story, we're trying to keep it. So at the very least, we can do a master suite on the first floor. My wife has got glaucoma. She's likely going to go blind. Um, I'm getting older, my knees are shot. We don't, you know, we're hoping to not have to constantly use stairs. And with the township's requirement of 1,350 square feet for a ranch home, we can't fit that on that lot. So by definition, it's really not a reasonably buildable lot, in my opinion, if we can't even meet the town's criteria. Gotcha. Okay. Sure. So, the debate is not uh, whether it's, it is or it isn't a buildable lot. The, the question is uh, a variance of 15 feet on the 75 foot setback. Right. Um, the commissioners are well aware of all of the road discussion that went into this. Um, we, we felt that the building footprint that was available to the owner applicant was sufficient for a house and that we were never given that as a, an option. That therefore, again, while we agreed that the, there's our unique property limitations and we agreed that there apparently is no public harm, uh, the, the, the unnecessary hardship to that, you know, the opinion of all of the commissioners was not met. Okay, and, and that's the, the one that's usually the um, the one that takes the most discretion, possibly, or I guess the thought process is different. Uh, the unique property limitations, pretty obvious there with the, the road, the channel, and the, and the grades, the slopes, that's, that's true. Uh, public harm, they discussed that, so it does come down to, to the unnecessary hardship. And I do think no matter what we do here, I would suggest that when it goes to the county that you kind of say the same things you did here. Uh, only because the other ones are going to probably have to be convinced. Are, are normally, I mean, normally, I mean, we have a plan commission that, you know, uh, very experienced, uh, by the way, and uh, uh, we try, you know, to um, go along with their recommendation, but you witnessed a couple where, where we didn't. There was usually reasons for it. I don't see any reasons here other than I, I, I know the issues on Beulah Heights and Austin Road because of many other issues that are there and a lot of them come down to, you know, the steep slopes and the narrow road and the roads not being in the right way and all that type of stuff. So there are some unique issues here. Uh, the question that's gonna come up at the county and it should be a question here is that, okay, well, then the house is too big for the lot because the setbacks, um, 
maybe they've changed since the adjacent neighbors did theirs because they were built earlier. Those other homes have been a long time. Been been a long time. Been a long time. So, yeah. So th this is. But uh, did they set the precedent? Well. No. Not when they have different no. variants. Yeah, and, and the other thing that could happen uh, here, and I don't know if you've attacked it from that, the uh, the averaging of the adjacent neighbors, you know, um, sometimes a, a, a variance will come down to just that, the neighbors, okay? And they will use that sometime. In this case, one of them really is a strong case because it's only 54 feet, but the other one is you know, 116, you know. So, you know, that, 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 that average is 80 feet. That doesn't help you at all, you know, because that's already, you know, 20 feet more, you know, than it's listed. So, I mean, Mr. Commissioner, I think if you take that averaging, you have to make sure you include all of that. The one depicted, I don't think, was averaged into that. So if you say this you got 20 feet, the one in the picture, that the yellow house. Okay. If you oh, yeah. 20 feet, then divide by three. But that's not ne next door. That's, sure. that's ways a little that's I, I, But in the area, you know a whole bunch of them, right? Yeah, we were just I was just cleaning up the clean up the channel, but Yeah, there's some that are pretty close. There are some. Yeah. A lot of them were original cottages from years ago. I mean, I'm right. not completely against this. I can understand your hardship. I've seen that lot. It's steep, but Yes. And I know a couple other ones that are kind of the same type of situation and it's gonna uh, He's gonna have to build a retaining wall. I don't remember the name of that gentleman, but he's probably pretty close here. And in order to make it work for a garage, you know, because he's got 38 feet of fall from the road to the channel. You know, this one here is probably close to that, right? 30 for sure. Can I make one? Sure. I think one other aspect that we're not really recognizing here is the fact that with this, with the setbacks that we're able to work in, if we were to back the garage up right at that 75 feet, we can only get a 22 foot deep garage, which is like the smallest possible two car you could get. And then our driveway would only be 23 feet long. You can't even park a, a vehicle, we'd be sticking out in the road. We'd be sticking out in the road. That is a safety hazard. That's yeah. a big safety concern. If we have to park on the road right across from our property, you've got a three foot road right away and then it goes up an embankment. So you only have three feet to park, you'd be parking in the road. On the side of our property, it drops right off. You can't park along the road. There'd be not really enough driveway to park in. That is a problem. And if we have to park on the road, you're not going to get a fire truck down past us if there's a fire at the end of the road. You might not get one even if you're not parked on well, the road. Yeah, but if we're I mean, the road, really, sure. yeah, yeah. there's yeah. really tight areas, <clears throat> low lying trees, and there's all sorts of stuff happening. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I grasped the answer yet on the square footage. The 1488 square foot first floor, okay, and then you got 2864 footprint. What's, what's the difference between these two? That would be if we did a two-story, it would be 2864. 1488 is just over a year required minimum for a one-story for a ranch home, but that's arguably that's a pretty small house. Got you. Okay. All right. Further questions? Questions? Anyone? I mean, I guess we, we typically would go with the advice of our... Typically. You know, I mean, I... Well, that's why we vote. And, and, um, and county and the county does have the final say in this. Correct. Thing. You guys bring in your argument. I just want you know to, to remember that end of it. But right, right. Uh, you start dealing with waterways, and I got to say this: starting now, you start setting precedences because it is always a, it always makes me nervous for having a discussion. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love a new neighbor. I really would, but. Yeah. I think too, I mean, we're talking about a house here. So we're not talking about an accessory structure, a boat house or something else. This is an actual living quarter. So, um, you know, for the people who come in front and I respect them, they request something additional. This isn't even additional. Um, you know, this lot has changed hands. Mr. Wiener is a new buyer of it. We're talking not being able to build a, a house on that. And, yeah. Well, just know, not being able to build a house that they that want. That, or the way you want it. Is not it even necessarily really that. It's a question right. of, you know, do we get to the minimum footprint size for a single family home that makes reasonable sense? That's our position anyway. Mm -hmm. yep. And so I think it's a different request than somebody who comes in here and wants to build an accessory building or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there's, well, yes, the county makes a decision. We doesn't mean we don't want your support. So mm -hmm. don't just 
Okay. So they decline us because simply, mm -hmm. oh, the county can overrule it. We think it does carry weight, and that's why we're here and spend the time to be here. Okay. And again, one last question before we vote. Uh, using the setbacks as they exist, and, you know, the street's there, the channel's there, what would the side of the house be that fits in that envelope versus, you said, the one, one um, a ranch minimum? You said you said a number. I didn't I didn't think there was a, a minimum. He said thirteen. Yeah, thirteen fifty I believe is the township's minimum. Eleven fifty is the county's minimum, but according to the county the township has yes. its own minimum of thirteen fifty. Yeah, that's gonna be building inspection. Okay. All right. Okay, I think we're uh, ready for a vote and this I think we're gonna do a roll call vote on this because it's bound to be uh, so split here. Do you want to start in your end? Well, the question is: Is it a vote to deny or a vote? It's a vote to deny. Uh, the vote, uh, the action of the plan commission was to deny, and uh, I would presume you'd make a motion to accept the plan commission recommendation. Yes. On that, and I'm not sure so if we. I would vote yes to accept the plan commission's denial. Well, we need a motion. Yeah, right? we didn't. Uh, uh, we, the first motion we need is. Just your motion for the board, to, so we can have something to second. Then we vote. So I think that's what he was just trying to do. Yeah, I don't. But I'll, 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 I'll do it again. So yeah. I think the 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 motion is to deny the variance request for the vacant lot on Austin Road, BET seven zero 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 one zero A one section Southeast. Okay. All right. Do we have a second to that motion? Anybody make a motion? I'll second. Uh, Michelle, second. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. You said that the the planning commission had alternative uh, configurations. Yes. No. We did not offer. Okay. Uh, we did not offer different building plans. We did not feel as if that was within our uh, responsibility. We are concentrating largely on the information provided as well as the three-step hardship criteria. I know the three steps. Okay. Joe? Yes. I know Chad has a comment too. I'm going to ask that the motion be restated because the town board should really be um, putting their findings as to why they're denying the variance yep. um, on record. Okay. All right. Um, there'll have to be an amen amendment to the motion, but you had another comment and discussion. I was just going to trying to ask the question. Uh, Parking is always a huge issue all around that area. So as it sits right now and you, you get that, uh, that variance, what is your driveway then? My driver would be about 27, 28 feet instead of 28 Okay, so you grab 12, 5 feet. And does your garage... Like does, much, but that's huge. I, I live over in that area. I know yeah. exactly what 5 feet can do. Just on, in your garage, what does that give you for your garage size if you... Well, the way the architect drew it in there, I think he drew it at 24 by 24. But we could actually go just a little deeper. Um, reason for wanting that is just to the left of the structure is where the... In, in the buildable area is where our septic has to go. So mm -hmm. we wouldn't even have a place to put a shed. Where do you put your lawnmower? Where do you put, if we have the smallest two-car garage, we have nowhere to put anything. So we were hoping to make it just a little deeper or a little wider if we can get the setback, that then we can allow for you know, yard implements, et cetera. Okay. All right, so I would say that Bill will have to amend his motion to include, I think you have right in your minutes, what's the reason action. why. So you want to read that last sentence you have there? Unnecessary hardship. Um, I'm sorry. It's okay, on the. Uh, gotcha. Okay, so Commissioner Smith's comment? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. All right. The reason being for the motion is that the unanimously the planning commissioners did not feel as if the um, three point hardship criteria for encroachment on the lake shore setback was met. Okay. That would be for the proposed drawing uh, from Stack's design group. Right. I'm sorry to be a stick. But it would make more sense. 
to say which of the three criteria the was not met. Which is the unnecessary the hardship. Was found. Yeah, the unnecessary hardship. Right. Unnecessary hardship. Okay, and, and then, I mean, the meeting minutes would go along with our information to the county, and right in there it states why uh, it was denied. So, okay, so that's the amendment. Thank you. That's right. Any planning commission item should be a motion to accept the planning commission's recommendation mm -hmm. to deny due to not meeting the three hardship three step hardship criteria. Mm -hmm. It should the motion that's should what he be that, to accept the planning right. commission's recommendation. That was mm -hmm. not stated clearly. You stated it. You did not. Mm -hmm. not. Okay. May I have a redo? Do it. <laughs> so I make a motion that the town board, town board deny, no, no, accept, no, accept, accept, the accept the planning commission's recommendation, recommendation to deny the variance request for vacant lot on Austin Road, PET 7000081, section southeast, in particular for not meeting the unnecessary hardship criteria established for encroachment of a shoreline setback given the proposed footprint of the residents. Did that catch it all? We didn't have the... No, we, we've got it it's up good. video. We're good. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I ask a question? Is are there any one? houses that are newer in this area that... You know, um, that I know of, they are, but they're more... Have they all met the 75-yard setbacks? Okay. I, the houses themselves, I believe most of them have that once these... Are these regulations are you know, we came up with these variances okay. and all that, but there are there are a lot of houses that are close to the water. You know, they're, they're older, close to the water. They have but boat houses. They're down older there. and grandfathered. I, I assume so. Okay. I don't know the exact time that all of you know that this from the planning commission have come in, but I would assume that looking at most of them, they were cabins at one time and they either added on or I can't think of anything new in the last. Ten years or five years over there. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so Bill restated the motion. We have not received a second on that yet. We have a second. Second. Barb Church second. All right. Further discussion. Okay. Uh, we just one question. So then, if county denies, then the whole property owner would have to come back with a different plan to start over. Yes. Correct. Yes. And if we deny, the county can approve. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. This is a tough one. Uh, again, when you're talking about unnecessary hardship, you come down to, you know, opinions, you know, uh, and the people that are going to be doing the opinions in Elkhorn are, you know, seven different people than are here. Now with us, it's 12 people. All right, so we're into a roll call vote. And the motion okay. is? Booker, I. Okay. Wales, nay. Mm. Church, nay. Mm. Barkowski, nay. Reyes, nay. All right, uh, motion carries uh, four to one, so the no, motion. no motion fails. Failed. Well, the motion failed, but the, the, the motion to deny uh, failed. has failed. failed. Yeah. Motion to deny has failed. And uh, again, the information uh, mm -hmm. will go to the county. Is this scheduled? Not my not not. Okay. And they won't act until they get our information. So that is the uh, the board's action on it is, is that the motion to deny is not carried. All right, any questions? We're good? All right. That is a hard one. It is. Okay. Next one, public comments, time period number one. Public comments? Ryan? Yeah, I mean, I'll have you go first, or I have a chat and talk. 
<laughs> so I want to touch base. Uh, you start me yet? <laughs> Whatever you say. Okay. Chairman Krakowski, uh, can you reach out to Scott Seeger and Jeremy, uh, the chief at uh, Village of East Troy, and the ATV ordinance that's going to be set into stone in July, July 1st, um, the villages and the cities and the towns have an option to opt in or opt out. And I'm asking you if you can contact them. And there's 1,485 feet of road on Stringers, on St. Peter's Road that is shared with the village and is also shared with the township. So one side of the street's a town, one side's the village. And it's a little over a quarter mile long. And if somebody here doesn't ask them to, to opt that little section in, we're gonna have a mismatch of our trail system on our roads. So it's just something maybe that you or the board or somebody could call over, write a letter or something, I don't know. Be something nice to do. And there's also a, a short section uh, on Town Line Road between Highway ES and Highway 20 uh, to be able to connect our township to the town of Troy. So I'm hoping maybe somebody can do it. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to see if I can give them a call or go over there and talk to them and ask them. Um, I know they don't have to do it. I know the village doesn't have interest in having ATVs running around over there, but it is a shared road and it, it would help complete our mm -hmm. system. Sounds like a, a item for the Tri Troy Alliance because Perfect. that's what we do. Okay. So, okay. Uh, I have something else here. Um, on the audit that uh, Baker Tilly Gal did earlier, are there copies available, hard copies, or is it on the web available? The audit is online, on the website. It is, it's so you can go on there and print it off? Yes. Okay, perfect. It's under notices and then it's in the notes it says. Okay. Um, uh, there's Lots of money left in the ARPA. Does the town have any inclination to be uh, requesting any more of that for our projects around here? Uh, that's going to be reported at the annual meeting. There's like only 5,000 left of it. Because if I remember correctly, uh, you have Army Corps of Engineers coming down to inspect the uh, bridge on Beulah Heights Road. Army Corps of Engineers? No, engineering firm. No, no I thought you said you wanted to go with the Army Corps of Engineers because it was cheaper. Army Corps of Engineers does not do bridge inspections. No, it's going to be a, a private consultant. I think the one we approved last month was Corps Engineering, I believe, mm -hmm. who has the county yeah. bridge inspection program. Okay, it, it was the one that had the same with the county. Yeah. And then they were also going to do the one on St. Yep. Uh, Stringers Bridge. Yep. Yes, Stringers Bridge and Bill Heights Road. Okay, so what was the name of the company that's going to do Cor it? Corps Engineering. Corps Engineering? C O R R E. They have offices in Milwaukee, Madison, Green Bay. Stevens Point. Okay. Oh, oh, Thank over. you. You bet. All right. Uh, public comments. Ron English, W2351, New Deal Avenue, here as a private citizen. <laughs> Good to see everyone. Um, two of the requests, but I think the last comment actually, or some of the dialogue answered one of my questions. So um, I know all of the agenda items are very important to the board, and I know that they're all very important. There are some agenda items that you know inherently encourage or require attendance. It'd be nice in the future for both private citizens as well as representatives who charge by the hour. For those private citizens, if those agenda items could be moved closer to the front, mm -hmm. but just a minor request. And then I think I heard correctly that there is, I know I sent an email to some of the board members back mm -hmm. in April of 2022 asking about the culvert being looked at for Stringers Bridge Road. Mm -hmm. I think I heard correctly that is being inspected. Yes. In fall. Okay, in fall. Yep. Okay, do we have it? Do we have when the Walworth County has the, the whole uh, program being done where they inspect all of the bridges in the county, that's the same time that they're going to do with these two. Okay. So please. I, I didn't meet with the county and was told that it's technically not a bridge. 
So no. Just qualifies mm-hmm. that, but it's going to happen as part of that same. Yeah, they're both culverts, and but yeah. they've never been inspected, and we need to do that. That's why we're doing it. I, un- I unofficially expect them a lot, so if you ever need a third party thing. Okay. And I so are think you there's asking that the citizen specific funding earlier in the agenda. That's oh, no, fine. I know some system. boards do it right away. Mm-hmm. I'm talking more about like things like plan commission or things mm-hmm. that are going for citizens are going from the board requesting approval. Those people tend to show up, and yeah. not that I know all the stuff's important, but not everyone's here for three hours, two hundred yeah. hours. That, that's one of our uh, things that we got to look at. Uh, and you know, some of this is just it's it's this which we, we're, we're doing sure. now, you know. But we've been awfully awfully busy. There's other yeah. items I'm sure people are going to call up and say, "How come that one is not on there or that one?" Most of those are way down the food chain from what we're doing here. Understood. This is very important. Stuff. Understood. Very important. So. Thank you. You got public comments? Anyone? Good. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, unfinished business update on East Troy uh, Railroad Museum Bridge. Uh, we should have all received uh, uh, correspondence from Attorney Mills on this. And we have to schedule a meeting to decide what we want to do. I have a good start on the language of what, uh, how it's going to have to occur. The only way funding occurs for federal and state money on that bridge is if we own it. However, the Railroad Museum. Uh, they own the bridge, so they have a financial responsibility until it's finally replaced, whenever that may be, and then it's 100% ours forever. We are the final solution, but we have to have a agreement and a sale to make that happen. So we need to have a meeting. That's what we're going to later on schedule that. Uh, I am attempting to meet with the CEO of that to see if there's any other common ground there um, other than... Uh, we've discussed, you know, having a meeting. We haven't did it yet. I will plan on doing that probably before we have our meeting. I don't think I'll get anything earth-shattering because at that, uh, with that group, they don't normally make unilateral decisions. They have to have a board meeting of their, their own, at least an executive committee meeting before any decisions are made. But that's what we had the last time we had we had them here. We had basically their executive board here. So. Uh, that's no other news on that one. Okay. Did I understand Attorney Mills' memo that the purchase of the grid bridge would not be considered land, right. therefore would not it does be not require, require special elector, elector approval. approval. Great. Our whole plan here is to get this bridge rebuilt with 100% federal money. There also was a, an application put in for a, what do you call that? Uh, special... Yeah, through Senator... Baldwin Senator Baldwin, we sent yeah. that request. Uh, earmark. Yes. We had a request for an earmark. And of course, if you can imagine the amount of applications or requests to get on that, we have not heard anything, but the applicant was the Railroad Museum, and uh, per the direction we had at that meeting, mm-hmm. I did uh, send a, a letter of support, which ended up being a um, working on, their, on the st- uh, state's internet site or the federal government's internet site for how, I, I just going to attach a letter. I had to go fill out their form, mm-hmm. okay, and then tie it to their request. So I haven't heard on that, but earmarks, I have no idea on the timing, how, how long it takes you know, mm-hmm. to get a response, I would not hold my breath on that one. That was a long shot. Right. Very big time. And I guess I thought we were actually expecting most of the, this year is the only year that we could get the 100% funding, right? No. So it realistically, it's going to be 80-20. No, no. There's one other program that the deadline is October 28th. Right. That's this also year. A possibly 100%, but the only way you get to 100% is, is the if the bridge is replaced and not just repaired. Right. If it's repaired, it'll be 80% no matter what. And it has to be below the 60. Fifth, uh, 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 59 rating. or to be less than 50. 50 or under. Mm-hmm. Rating. Right, sufficiently rating. We're not there yet. No. no. Now, the next inspection, which again is later in the summer, it could deteriorate <coughs> to that point. I don't think it will go from 56 to 50 in one year. 
but it couldn't. And then furthermore, when they're doing the actual grant application, uh, they have to prove that a deck uh, rehab is even feasible with that type of structure, the box girder. Mm -hmm. You might take off that top four inches of concrete and the rest of it goes away, yeah. you know, so. That's that's to be found. Yeah. When you're saying when they apply, they're gonna have to. No. Well, we already agreed that uh, you know if we get this agreement done, that there will be a grant application that will share 50-50 percent on the cost with Lynch to submit that application when it's due by October 28th or whatever that date was. So there is, uh, we have some time here. Uh, I'm not sure that. I'm going to get very far with, even if he is the CEO, mm -hmm. because he'd have to commit resources, and that happens uh, with, you know, their executive board, or maybe their big annual meeting themselves. You know, so really, uh, all we have to do is uh, schedule a meeting so we can further discuss what our next step is based on the recommendation of the board. So, I guess, or, yeah, and maybe I. I would feel better about being a little more transparent and including it on the agenda at the meeting of the I, electors if I they think, think there's potential. I think it's already on there. It's already on there. Yeah, it is. The Railroad Museum Bridge update. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. okay. And basically what I'm going to say is kind of what I just said here, I don't think we'll have any new information by then. You know, but uh, this is unusual too. I mean, yeah, but you're saying we wouldn't have to have them vote on it. It could just be more no, informal, informal. Uh, informative. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, Mr. Chairman, is there an actual timeline for this? Because if if the bridge is reasonably sound, mm -hmm. um, we postpone the decision for many people who drive over the bridge. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the timing on it is, is you don't know how quick the deterioration is going to continue. What it was said a couple of years ago was in that, you know, in five, ten years, they're going to probably have to post it. That's been actually moved up because, you know, the last reading we got is, you know, considerably worse than the previous one. So uh, the timing is this year we have, I think, we already established the only way you get federal or state money for this bridge is if, a municipality owns it, and it's us. And it is in our best interest to eventually own that bridge, okay? So we don't have to deal with this. A nonprofit shouldn't be only owning bridges, you know? But it happened. It has This happened. year, This year. Yeah, okay. this year. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, next item. Discussion, possible motion on creating a YouTube channel. I guess that kind of goes hand in hand with the next one, which is discussion and possible motion on YouTube versus Facebook video streaming and storage. I think you can do yeah. one or the other or both, mm -hmm. uh, but why don't you leave the discussion on that? So I think um, basically what the committee has requested is that we establish a YouTube channel as an option to do some testing. Um, it was shared with the committee that there were some equipment challenges that could be upgraded or changed. Um, we found, as we reported last month, there were some videos at 360 pixels, some at 720 pixels, so for the clarity. Um, we don't know for sure what that is. Um, when I spoke with Jen, there's, she's thinking maybe bandwidth because of the people, because she said when there's no one here, it's 720 pixels. But we would like, but, our committee's recommendation is that it's free to establish a YouTube page and do a test to see if that would make a difference. Um, in the committee report, um, there was some additional research, just randomly looking at different communities at their video um, streaming platforms have not yet found Facebook Live. Again, it was just randomly picking names off the top why of my head. Why are there no towns? It's all cities. Um, a lot of the so in the previous report there were towns from both the ad hoc committee and our and our March report. There were towns. 
um, because when you look up the community, it typically defaults to the city rather than the town. And a lot of the towns did not have um, any video either. So that could be included. So yeah, we're a step ahead, but by having the video, absolutely, we acknowledge that. Um, that it's not done by all of the towns in the area. So we're definitely a step in the right direction. And just the first step we're asking is to establish a YouTube page. It's free, it's no obligation. Um, to do a test is free to see if that helps the video quality, which is our expectation. It is noticeable, the, uh, the quality of the picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that is noticeable, mm -hmm. and if that takes equipment, obviously we're going to do that, it. Right. That laid in on As I mentioned, when I spoke to Jen, her thought when um, she was working with Todd was, it's potentially internet bandwidth because there's less when they test it in an empty room. It's seven twenty, but when it's actually recording with other people in the room, it's three sixty. But that's not what we've understood Kim. would be in effect. By going through the laptop, that should improve. So we'll know after tonight mm -hmm. whether that the quality of the picture will improve. Mm -hmm. So that should take care of band, you know, the pixel quality. Mm -hmm. okay. We eliminated some of the, the cords and how it was split. Because it was split too many times, that's why we're losing a lot of it. It mm -hmm. also depends upon if anybody's in the, meet, in the meeting like we are now. They're on their phones, taking out some of our internet uh, mm -hmm. well, so yeah. Then we could have a new rule, all phones. Yeah. No phones. Yeah. No yeah. phones. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they're more splitting, that it's a direct line now. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just noticed on your communications report, and, and this has been an issue too, where people have been saying that you must have a Facebook page. You do not have to have a Facebook page. You can click on the Facebook link on the website mm -hmm. and just go to videos on Facebook, and you do not have to have an account. Where does it say that you must have a Facebook page? Still not finding Facebook Live for video streaming. You must right. have a Facebook page and videos of it. Most have a Facebook page, M-O-S-T. Okay. Have a Facebook page and live videos. It doesn't, but the Facebook is not used for meetings. Go ahead. <laughs> there is one other issue. In order to stream have we, how we set it up now, going to the to the website and clicking on a link, that took a lot of work and programming to get it where it is right now. If you go to a YouTube channel, that is a lot of work that needs to go in that direction. It, you can't bounce back and forth. A lot of work and effort on Jen's behalf, has gone into getting a very straightforward, go to the website, click, video, click, you're there. User-friendly. Yep. Extremely user-friendly. Yep. But all of the other sites that we've checked are very user-friendly with Can YouTube. You but they're Facebook already set up. Can you the upload on YouTube? I mean, can you have both at the same time? I don't. No, well, I need that for sure. No. My only comment is if the board goes mm -hmm. ahead to establish the town YouTube channel, my mm -hmm. suggestion would be um, one, only board can approve what gets uploaded onto the town's page, and two, make sure that all you can turn the comment section off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that just be yeah. part of it. Okay. Right, Barb. Okay. <clears throat> But when you are going to YouTube, that's already set up. We're not looking at the prep time that it's going to take to set it up and, and test it. And what happens to Facebook? Are we, we're making Jen do too? Because how do you keep up Facebook if you're focusing on YouTube? Well, we're just it's not. creating it's a not. channel. It's not. It's right. totally separate. This motion. It's just... You can set what, it up as well. Define a channel then for me. You're setting up a YouTube channel just simply for the videos only. 
So when you do the live stream video via YouTube, at the end, it automatically is there. And then again, we can put the link in our page where we have our meetings and agendas, minutes, packets, and the link to the video. Um, it has more storage. It has, um, like we said, we think it will help with the pixeling and the video streaming quality. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's as a test to start, is yeah, all we're asking. I sure. mean, it's a test, mm -hmm. and that part is free. We don't know yet if, like mm -hmm. you said, the laptop deal improved that part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a possibility, because we're dealing with, you know, these big uh, high-tech companies, going away. Right? Same thing with Facebook. Could be either one. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. either Any one, one of them mm -hmm. can just go away. <laughs> Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Or change the rules, or yeah. change mm -hmm. the cost. Uh, there's a lot yeah. of different things that yeah. can happen there. And there are the preferences. YouTube the police for video. department is spending thirteen thousand dollars. They're spending eleven $1 hundred dollars a month to store videos. I'm worried about us having to eventually pay a charge when we don't have to. Okay. We don't have to right now. No. No, mm -hmm. I know that, but. Yeah. And they're a little bit we haven't even talked about storage of videos yet. Mm -hmm. It's that's, on that's the agenda. That's okay. All right. Um, there's a lot of different ways we can do this here. I don't know if it would help to know well, what Jim's deal yeah. here. See if you get a second and then have discussion. Okay, on okay. The first one we're talking about singly, we're not doing the second one. Okay. So it's B. Smart. Discussion and possible motion on creating a YouTube channel. So we need a motion. Right. So I would that. make a motion that we create a YouTube channel for the town of East Troy. All right. Do we have a second? Anyone? Yeah, I'll second. It doesn't. doesn't Chad, second. All right. Uh, discussion. We discussed a lot here. What goes into creating a channel, Michelle? Um, what has to happen? We, we had that in last month's report. Um, it also goes, it's setting up, I think it was a Microsoft page, right? Let Google. me, a uh, Google page. Google. Yep. Uh, so now Google we need entity. A Google account and a YouTube. Which is not a big deal. It's, not, it's, it's an identity page, a Google identity. And then we set up the YouTube page. We have those steps that are needed that we provided last month. Was that in the March 6th report? Uh, I think it was probably the 6th, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Intent to migrate video stream storage Facebook. Again, we'd be happy to work with Jim. If we don't Spend have a other account, account, Google account, we probably mm -hmm. have a motion to create one. Do we have to be that specific? We right, that's, that's, that's part of the process. Required, but then you just it's said part of the process. It's YouTube channel, that's part of the process. That yeah. you be, or you would rather be, you be more specific on every all the steps? Well, how many other requirements are there, I guess, is just my question. And then that's we it. have to mm -hmm. not stream on Facebook in order to do We're the not test. there yet. No, that's, no absolutely that not. Test. Then how are you going to test a stream? Um, the committee can come in and test just with you, or yeah, we, we can Jen test, or we can test at our committee Kim. meeting. Or I have full confidence that Jen can do all of this. Okay, but the amount of work to test, and then it doesn't, it doesn't finish. Mm -hmm meet where we need to be. Why are we reinventing when we're really good right now? What additional benefit is there to go to the YouTube besides to have that little link in those? To get to the quality, picture quality that we're looking but for. But this is taking care of the picture we, quality. We hope. Well, we hope. We will know tomorrow. We hope, right. And like Todd said, the splitting of the lines mm -hmm. was affecting the quality. So. We hope. Why? I think probably someone can see it now, but I can't obviously while I'm here. Yeah. Okay. I don't understand mm -hmm. why. Okay. Because it's a free option to test to get to where we want to be. It's still 
a lot of work to get it onto the website. You're talking about reprogramming, re, I don't know what they call it, recoding the website. I'm sorry? Redoing what's done. Redoing what's done. Or adding to what's done, right? We're not adding to what's done. But wouldn't the, you're going to have to, you have to wipe out the whole website. What if they kind of want to the page, show the whole website? The whole here's what it looks like now, here's what it looks like on our page. And let the board decide then. Say it again, I didn't quite follow If that. you approve to do the YouTube channel mm -hmm. for testing purposes, mm -hmm. wouldn't the committee bring to the board, here's what's here's what we found in testing, look at this mm -hmm. picture quality mm -hmm. versus what we have now? That would be a good way to do it. Yeah, what would be that would be the motion you would want to ask for if that's the case then, right? Because you kids can't do any of that without board approval. So if this doesn't pass, then that maybe that's the next step to, mm -hmm. to get more inside on it. My question is, as I keep hearing it, believe you me, to me, this is brain surgery because I know nothing about it. <laughs> I really don't. But um, I, oh, I keep hearing, and, and I've gone because I've been concerned with uh, how everything's been going to the meeting, and I keep hearing the ton of, what's a ton of work? Is it, is it a month? Is it, is it 80 hours? Is it 160 hours? What is, I don't, I don't know what a lot of work is because I don't do this stuff, but I don't, and I know Jen's, Jen's job is is not just the okay. just right. just this. She does do the majority of with court, but you know, I don't think that is anybody asking for this to be done by the end of the week. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do we have the time to be able to be able to work in a gen schedule to see if it'll work? Or those are my questions. I just keep getting concerned. I don't want to do any more work at work either. Yeah. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. Nobody does. But yeah. Okay. Oh. Could I speak to Chairman Chicago? Uh, about this? Exactly this. about this. Okay. Kind of a video guy. Basically, I went on the town's website a little while ago and tried mm -hmm. to link up my phone to the mm -hmm. meeting, and it says you have to do it only from a desktop, which is kind of baloney. It says it right there, desktop only. Mm -hmm. um, to set up a YouTube channel and to set up a uh, Google account is all of 15 minutes. It, it's mm -hmm. not a big deal. And the bandwidth on YouTube is better and far superior to the bandwidth mm -hmm. on Facebook. Facebook Live. You can get by with Facebook, but it's mm -hmm. going to be grainy, it's going to be choppy, and it's not because our stuff is bad, it's because their system is overloaded. There's billions of people on mm -hmm. Facebook, and Google's better set up with YouTube to make it work better for us. Okay. Thank, you. Yep. Thank you. I'm looking at you on my phone right now, standing in front of Joe. This is one of the issues that has been happening between mobile devices and yep. at least I've never heard it one of the meetings. Right. But some right there. If I get the link sent to me through notification because I would, I'm signed up to get notifications, I can get it on my phone every time. But if you go just off your phone, go to the town's website. That's what I did. Well, he just tried it right here and it didn't work, correct? It I did just, not work. I'm on the town's website. They kind of have an issue yeah. with that. that so with that, hit or miss. That's what so. she's been reporting. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's catch these one at a time because they're all interconnected and I agree that it's not something that you know has to be done today or whatever right. but the committee put a lot of work into this year and I still have one concern that you know all of the webmasters haven't been totally ingrained in this because I'm hearing things now that I don't know you heard before mm -hmm. you know so we have a motion on the floor here for the uh, town to create a YouTube channel let's do a roll call vote it's yes or no We've asked the communication committee to research options to improve our process. I think Mr. Jones informed us that the vast, the majority, 60% of townships don't even go through this in terms of live broadcasting. Is that correct? Most of this small sample of our sampling. Yeah. So we're we're ahead there. Right. They're asking us to uh, give an option that to just further explore. I think that's a valid thing we should approve. We've heard the webmasters can do it, and I haven't heard any legal objections at this point, other than uh, I don't think there I, are I legal them. objections to it. It's just yeah. board want to do it or doesn't. Right. Mm -hmm. So. I think there's going to be three three decision-making pieces, though, as we move forward in, with all of this. And one's going to be 
Does it pass the webmaster's needs? Does it pass the legal needs? And does it pass the vision or of mission of the board? So I would, I have no reason not to vote in favor of this. Okay. If it's a rule, I'll tell it, What's the motion? Yeah. To establish a YouTube channel. To establish a YouTube channel. So to enable testing, basically what you said. Okay, what are the Chats things that we need to do to, to set a YouTube channel? Establish a Google, Google account and then you establish the YouTube page. It's a two-step process. Okay. And you'll keep us updated yeah. with your testing. Sure. Yeah. Leah can demonstrations help. With, yeah, the committee can help. In case that it's better. Yeah, okay. Either, yep. yep, what the results yep. are. Okay. Final comments, Chad? Good. Barb, any other questions? No. Okay. All right. Roll call vote. Third bill. Booker, yes. Wales, yes. Reyes, yes. Klarkowski, yes. Church. Church, yes. All right. Now, again, that's, you called it out as being the first step to see if it's even possible. Mm -hmm. I do think we're going to get more information here. I still have concerns that YouTube, uh, it, again, being you know these, these big companies that come and go, they're not going to go away, but their process, their charges, uh, there's people out there that say, if it's YouTube, I ain't, I ain't touching it. Okay, security reasons. There's reasons for that. Okay, uh, but if you have good, you know, software on your own computers, you don't have to worry about your phone. Okay, but in your computers, you better have good, good software on it for, for virus detection because a lot of it comes in through that, through YouTube. Okay, and there's certain people that already have come out and said, I, ain't, I'm not going to even go on there. I do think it needs to be evaluated and looked at, just like anything else we do. Uh, the pros and cons that you laid out are pretty much black and white to say, yeah, do it, okay. But I still have concern that the webmasters who are gonna to have to eventually do all of this haven't, haven't had their, their kick at this, okay. I do think since it's no cost, I think it's worth looking at. If this had a cost, I don't think I would have Voted that way. Well, the cost really is their time, and no one can answer how much. We don't know well, how the, much work is it to do this. Sure, the initial part is, it is just that. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. testing. That's it's checking. Cost. Look at. To be it. fair, right. viruses can come in through Facebook. Yeah. Yes. yes, true. They get hacked all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The people that have been yelling. Social media platforms. Yeah, yeah. Any of that. So, I think it's worth the it's worth the struggle to to at least look at it. I don't think we're at a point in time where we can say we know the answer okay no because we don't no okay next one was so that continues uh, with it yeah i that was carryover as part of unfinished business um the committee had in my submission we just wanted to establish the youtube channel at this time to do the testing um we are going to hold off on the next steps until we know if that works or not. Yeah, so I would motion to table um, the YouTube versus Facebook video streaming and storage. I'll second. All right, Chad, second. Discussion? Get a motion, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Can I? Shoot. I just have a question so we can clarify for Jen tomorrow because she does the majority of this work. Um, when we talk about creating the YouTube channel, mm -hmm. obviously she's got to create the channel and so forth. With regard to the interface between the website and a YouTube channel. That's down the road. Yeah. So future essentially step. all we're going right. to do is That's just test, it, like do a test video, see if the clarity is better. Yeah. Right. And then we can, now. we can understand from town web what the difference is yeah. okay. in the linking. Okay, just so she is clear on what she needs to do, and that's mm -hmm. simply create the channel, do some test videos, and see if they're clear. The committee will help with the test videos right, if you, needed, you so, so you have more bodies in here, if that makes a difference, or um, sure. I will follow up with Jen as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, uh, moving on. Um, update on emergency management plan, Chad, of course, explain 
the differences, what we got going on here between the two plans? Um, well, they're really, we really haven't. They, as Kim kind of stated earlier on, that they were excited that we got our emergency uh, management plan done and in. I have not heard anything about that. Um, I don't know if I should be talking about the other thing because it's not an emergency, it's not on the agenda, so we might have to just. Well, what, what is the other one actually called? The one that the county wants us to approve? Walworth, they don't necessarily want us to approve it. So Walworth. Walworth County Natural Hazards Mitigation. Natural plan, Hazards. 2022 mm -hmm. to 2026. It's a five year update. And I think if, if you wouldn't mind taking a look, Joe, I think you had that one yep. that we had sent over a year Originally. ago to them and updated for us. But, they, but the county is saying. They want all the municipalities to adopt it, not approve it, adopt it. Otherwise, we're not available for FEMA funding. Right in their summary, it says, once the county adopts it, all towns are covered. Then why do they want us to adopt? They don't. They want those jurisdictions that participated in this. That's what you remember, you said. And when we didn't. didn't. We didn't participate. It was no, cities we, and villages that participated. Okay, to the village, yes, they... That was, we talked about that in our last. The only thing we did was updated. But we can't even really be having this discussion because yeah. right, it's not on right. Well, that the confusion was is it, mm -hmm. were we talking about the same plan? Mm -hmm. They're two different two things. Two different, two different plans. Plans. Okay. Yeah. So as far as our emergency management plan, we submitted it. We have not got comments back. Correct. I do have an update on that though. I got the last map for a campus, so I will be adjusting oh. that. I'm not going to send it out to county, but when we get that final approval, we'll add that in. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. Very good. Okay. New business discussion regarding amending records retention in regards to video recording and authorize attorney mills to amend if needed. Uh, and I believe you just you had covered that in a couple of your meeting minutes. You had so last month minute. we had tables, video storage, right. and sell attorney mills. So Correct. Talk to the state. Right. Uh, Yep. Um, records board. Mm -hmm. And I got a response that I forwarded to the board. Uh, but the scenario I gave is do we have to choose which medium is only good for the 90 days? If the clerk listens to audio, do we only keep the audio for 90 days after the minutes are prepared? What if she uses video and audio? Basically, the response was, we don't have to pick which medium. 90 days is what's required. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe you said you... I use both. Because if, when somebody leans back and I can't hear what they said, the audio, because I can hear it much better than out of that speaker, I'll go to the audio. So I do use both the majority of the time. I'm using video, but I have had to go and pull the audio recording to listen to what some people have said to clarify for minutes. And that was the scenario that I presented to them. Um, well, you, and, all, you yep. all have the email. Yeah. Yeah. And that finding was after our <coughs> last communications committee meeting that you shared with the board? Um, yeah, April and 4th. So I would recommend that we table this issue until the communications committee can look under better understand your findings and what the town may be well, interested follow in. Follow up with Wisconsin Historical Society. I mean, you have it writing from them. They have Ninety days. days. Right, but I think there are other communities that have a policy or other things. Shoot. Um, Deputy Clerk Treasurer Loth and I have access to the Wisconsin Municipal Clerks Association clerk list, which covers probably over 1,600 municipalities in the state of Wisconsin. We sent out a request for information about any towns that have a video retention requirement and only received a massive response of none. Not one. So mm -hmm. not one municipality, town, mm -hmm. in the entire state of Wisconsin has a video retention requirement. Mm -hmm. okay. But we would still have to do it for, for 90, days. 90 days after the minutes are prepared. 
So regardless of what you want to do in the future, sure. mm -hmm. our current ordinance only speaks to the audio recordings. Okay. But now we have video in the town. So video, that word has to make it into our ordinance, yes. ordinance mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. So you're asking mm -hmm. us to authorize you to amend our retention policy to say that after 90 days we have I think this might have been carryover from last month. It was. Month. Right. Right. Okay. All right, Chad. So, is that what you're asking? He's not asking. You're not asking. You're not asking. I'm, I'm not specifically asking for myself, but I'm telling you it's going to have to be. Sure. It's going to be required okay. at some point. Okay, Chad, you had a um, comment? Yeah, and, and again, I'm just speaking on what a, I don't know because it's a question and what I have heard. Um, most towns don't even have them, don't even have it. Right. And, and that's fine for them. But this was something that was brought up in an annual meeting that was voted on by the electors and was kind of a big issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we have this. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. I, don't, I know we don't reinventing wheels and there's a lot of work and all that stuff. But I also do know that there's been questions with meetings, even going back to our, like when our, our annual meetings two years ago. And I'll tell you what, it was real nice having those videos. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, and, and I'm just saying that, you know, and no offense to any of our minutes, but there's just, there is that detail that sometimes that don't get into the minutes. Mm -hmm. If it's not, not supposed to be. Pardon? Not supposed to be a minute. The minute? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There, not everything is. And I'm not saying our minutes, are, right. I mean, it's great. And you do, yeah, you do great. But it's, it's, yeah. it's come into a few times where, well, let's look it up. Mm -hmm. That's not mm -hmm. what I said. Well. Yeah, yeah. I did. I know. Sorry, yeah. I was wrong. That's not how I remember saying it. But okay. so I, I just, if it doesn't cost anything, what's the difference? Well, I will what's tell the difference you, if there's a year's worth? My legal opinion a, is, if you're not legally required to do something, don't, because then the onus is on you to make sure that fails. right. Yeah. Or, what do you mean if something charge. fails? I don't know. Right. Because what it's there's no power. If the storage, right I think. The storage field, you're not going to have your 90 days anyway, yeah. right? True. You might be able to recreate that or bring it back up somehow. You know, I'm mean, guess I'm asking. Well, are we still so on the same topic? Yes. Yeah. We're talking yes. about retention. Video great retention. Yeah. Okay. There are government storage options as well. That we, that, and so, again, and I would, uh, um, yes, a YouTube post, again, I would make a motion that we table this until the Communications Committee can provide further details. And recommendation. Second. All right. We have a motion second to table. Wait, but can I do the motion again? Oh, uh, yeah. That I would table the discussion around video storage. Well, it's a um, listed and, item. Yeah. Yeah, I think we already did. Yeah. Table the motion. Table the topic until communications committee can review. Right. 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 All right. Any other discussion? To, for in this one, yeah, this one is regarding video storage. Correct. Well, discussion is the inclusion of what we now know from right. from attorney mills, yep. mills and, and attorney mills, as well as the zero response. Um, I'd like one other factor. How many people are actually watching us? Do we know? We do. It's been pretty good, I think. Um, Jen has those numbers. Yeah, she had, I think there's been an example, of, like it's been viewed like 20 times, you know, different meetings. Some of them, depending on the topics, have been viewed 20 times or, um, yeah, I don't recall the specifics. But it depends on the topic. And that's a tough one because yeah. when I'm doing minutes, I might go in oh. and then I'm out. And then I'm in, and then I'm out, and then I'm in. And then just, you know, okay. because it's a three hour meeting, and I'm okay. on the phone, and. All right, so. well, the motion on the floor is to table 10A until yes. the Communication Committee discusses it some more. I don't see a problem with you know, pushing it out only because there's more, again, there's going to be more. I think my legal recommendation will change. Yeah. Right. I but know. I'm in no rush to update the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Right. This small. All right. Well, uh, let's vote on that motion to the table then. Uh, roll call vote. Was there a second? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Roll call. Anybody? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Five vote. Okay. All right. Discussion of possible acceptance of Taylor Computer Services proposal. Man, um, first of all, this goes on the timeline of us getting in the right century here. A lot of things we've improved in Town Hall with, you know, with facilities and carpeting and plumbing and the computer system. We kind of limped along a little bit. We did get more help than we ever had before, but we haven't answered some of the key components that these guys nailed with what a couple a couple of interviews with you guys. This is stuff that has one to be discussion. Done. Yeah, one, and um, so getting this accomplished should be a priority. The question is, is how much of it? You know. Uh, all of it is important, but when I went through this, I had a hard time determining what the total was. I know there's, you know, one-time cost and there's annual cost. Fifty-seven thousand dollars. I don't know. What is what is the total? Um, there are priorities in here for the police department that need to be moved forward before anything else. Which are listed under what? What? PD clerk. Uh, I mean, that's how it's it started. The third page from the back. AD server. Proposal for town of East Right AD server. Ladies. Do we have any other folks for this? Comparable? Sorry. Yeah, that, that's actually what I was going to ask, and I'm, by the sounds of it, they're talking with this company, they answered a lot of your questions, but we kind of did this already with the other yeah. gentlemen and Tom Bob to help us out, so I'm just wanting to make sure that we don't Thanks. do that same thing again. Um, Get that with Hazel, he works with a lot of other municipalities. But not with the police department. Our police department has to be our priority. No, no, I, I, I'm definitely okay with that. I'm just and asking about the company. This company did the Village of Eagles Police Department. They okay. did everything. I mean, Todd would give more information. Yeah, yeah. I'm just but, asking because I don't yeah. want to be playing this game where now all of a sudden we could have had different equipment and all that no. might have been done before. You know what I'm saying? Right. No. I just that, that's part of this. It's going around and around. The yeah. Taylor Communications, we haven't come in. Myself, the police chief, Kim, Jean, and we all sat down. Um, it's Dave, I don't know what his last name was, but he was, he's actually owner of Taylor Communications. I don't know if um, They tailored two municipalities with police departments. They don't do a whole lot. Private entities like other companies, they do, they do a few, but they're actually trying to get more out of that. Mm -hmm. So there's so much with technology for police departments, fire departments, mm -hmm. that they're kind of streamlining themselves into that. And they have more service technicians than our existing company does. And they, an they answer questions a lot quicker because I've had a few already, Jen's had a few. Right. We were already calling talk to them and it didn't cost us anything. It was just a recommendation. Mm -hmm. And even the recommendations for this came from him. So, yeah. is, so on this page that here, is that a, that's that total on the bottom, and that that would be something that the police department, yes. that you guys need, yeah. lieutenant, Absolutely. like all of that. Yeah. The police department kind of needs a server separate, uh, so that they're not tied to the town. It's sure. Harder to get outside access. Um, each officer should have their own login for the police or for every computer. Mm -hmm. If I jump on a computer over here, jump on one over here, I have to have a a login of my own, but it's still the same information I'm that I can access all the call posts to the server. Sure. And then nobody else has access to my files, so whether it be if I'm doing a, a background investigation yep. or anything else, some of the officers and other people should not have access to it. That's a good thing. For it's sure. equipment, a lot of equipment <clears throat> that we need to update and stuff we don't have that we should have to make. In these times, and how how all the new technologies. And, come. and plus, there's government requirements that 
police department. We have to or a big mm -hmm. also yeah. as far as security needs and things like that, especially with us having being in a county system. Mm -hmm. They don't want an outside company being able to get in and access their system because we sure. have two counties. All right. And this is something that needs to address, be addressed as soon as possible, but it will also move into the new building at no extra cost. When that's done, that's, yes, that's a great it'll just point. everything will move. All right. So we are we talking then the third page from the end, which is the server. Yep. Eleven thousand one sixty-five. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then continued on the next page. Which is the, the annual cost. cost. One time in the annual June, course. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen now, June. And I will say, with regard to Chad's concerns, those have been some of the biggest frustrations with moving forward with communication recommendations, things like that. Keiko, when he came in, stated that I don't have a lot of experience with police departments, but I have no problem getting up to speed with it. And then that responsiveness fell off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the big thing, is that he said, I don't have a lot of experience, but I can I can learn, I can do it, I'll get on board with that, blah, 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 and then wasn't responsive. Taylor already knows both. And it sounds like we are not up to speed as well. No. I mean, no. They're, they're saying things now that should have been addressed the first week of coming in for us. And right. There was, mm -hmm. yeah. there was stuff that was done under the previous chief that didn't meet what we needed to meet. All right, so um, I just have another question. Okay, um, I totally understand the police department security is everything with what you guys have going on. Do we have a timeline? I know you just you guys are saying that that's that's our priority at this moment. What's your what's your timeline, or when is all this other stuff, and how much does that add up to that? You know, when do you need that I done, or what? I don't think we have. I think it's something that can be worked on eventually. I do have in designated funds the amount for the police department server. That would be no like additional. Additional for this year? No. Okay. It would just be a budget amendment. We already have the money set aside and designated funds for commuter office equipment. So you guys aren't looking like we need our stuff or you know updated or whatever you guys need by July or anything so like that. The motion <laughs> should be limited to police department right. server for whatever dollar amounts are on those pages. That's what I was going for. Page uh, we're not doing a poll. one and ten. Right right now, page one, page eight, nine, and ten. Eight, nine. Page eight, eight nine. Page eight, nine. Page eight, nine. Okay. Yep. Sure. All right. Not as a question. Yeah. Where is he? I also, besides the server for police department, I don't know if we can do it in the same motion, is just if we have a computer problem generally, if we can Use them instead of cable. Yeah. They're on call. If something so comes up. Yeah. Just switching over to them, period. For basic, right. For basic. Good. Well, I guess, well, yeah, that's, set up, I guess I would agree with Chad's initial comment. Then the concern is, I, I'm concerned that we're going down the same path. Like, initially we thought Keiko was great because they had municipality experience. We didn't look at anyone else. Now, uh, what what do other what do other I mean I don't what do other police departments you, who do they use who does the fire district use who does who does McGuanago use who does East Troy use uh, other than Eagle should we be putting all our eggs in one basket again or have we learned from that Well, I think we'll be segmenting it anyway because if we do the server, that is a project by itself. We'll know how they perform on that whether or not we're going to continue with them. That's the critical part. We will find that out, but you're right. There's, I mean, there's a whole bunch of companies that do this. Yeah. Uh, companies, yeah. They don't all specialize True. in municipalities but with police departments. Right, and these guys do. That's it. where it narrows it down. Absolutely. Right. And the but they're not priority, the fact that the priority is the PD. That's it. And the fact that they can be on call and respond yeah, in a that's, very timely manner according to their And have situation. sufficient staff. Yeah. So that'd be IT support and the police server. That's the, that would be the motion now. That's what it should be, and we can look at well, further. Mr. Chairman, I mean, we're talking about information technology, vitally important for the police department, vitally important for the court, vitally important for the treasurer. 
vitally important for us. This is to get rid of rat spit. I'm ready to get rid of rat spit. Yeah, well, yeah. we're not approving that. And that yeah. No, but and that that all enable us. This is important and ought to have our intention. There is, there is no way this issue is going away. Right. This is all important. Mm -hmm. They've given us five bullet points and a, and a service agreement. Yep. I mean, it's it's going to be here in a month. We should deal with it now. Right. Okay. What, what don't you want out here? A, a, the police department clerk. Desk switch network equipment rack. I don't know. I don't know what I don't want or do want. I don't think I have yeah. contracts, so I'm not even I have, sure. I have, I, have, I, don't think I have no clue, but that's mm -hmm. I, that's why we're just asking. So like, and I don't think it's a matter of what we don't want. I think it's a matter of doing our due diligence. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's urgency for me, is I mean, I guess you got to make a motion. And it's a lot of it integrated because there's the police department. We've got the squad room with the chief's office and stuff like that. But then I also have to be connected into that system. And then if we're looking at a network for the township where Kim and I and Jen can all get to planning commission minutes and agendas and we can all get to town minutes and agendas. And then we have certain things that you're limited by passwords, okay? So you have that network server and Kim has files. I can't get into hers because I don't have access to them. I don't have permission for that. She doesn't have permission for mine. I don't have permission for Jen's court stuff. But it's all integrated. So are we going to piecemeal it where they do something and then, okay, we've approved this next step, then do we have to kind of redo some of what they've already done? I'd like to make a motion. Please. I'd like to make the motion that we, uh, that we uh, do the proposal for the town of East Troy 80 server for our police department for $11,165.65. I don't know how to say the next part, but minimal or whatever IT needs. IT support. Small IT needs support for the for town, and we'll go from there. At the rate of 130 per hour. Second. At the rate of 130 per hour. That's in the correct. Yes, okay, we have a second by Barb. Any further discussion? On the motion, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Name. Two no's. All right, so we're going to do the first part, and I think what will happen here is that we'll know right away when we tell them here's the part we need right now i don't think the integration problem is going to be a, a big issue here i do think we'll find out if they really are as good as they say they are i i think you know that's the proper way to do it i don't think we're going to approve this whole thing all at one shot because first of all we don't have money to do it number two we don't know yet if you know if these guys truly are as good as we hope they are so the motion uh, carried to do that first part three to two. Okay. All right. Uh, annual meeting reports deadline. When you need everything, Kim. We would like it by Wednesday. This Wednesday. It's uh, twelfth. Twelfth. Written reports that can be copied and put in the packets, so they don't have to be read verbatim during the annual meeting. Okay. What do you want to report? Oh. You're saying they do have to be read, read for me? No, what? they no. don't have to be read. No. no. Back to the people. To read. Hand out to people. You say it's on the communication committee. You could reference the, the report and you don't have to read it to everybody and pour everybody to tears. You're trying and to if somebody. Thank you. <laughs> but somebody can ask you a question like, oh, Michelle, what is the communication committee doing? A, you know, mm -hmm. general, brief, succinct. <laughs> Just praying and hoping. Wednesday, what time? Close the business, please. I knew. <laughs> it's no, Monday. It's 10 o'clock Monday night. Okay. Right. 4 o'clock Wednesday? 4 o'clock right. Wednesday. Then we, can, Four. we have all day Thursday to get them together. Yes. Okay. That's. So why four o'clock? Then then it would be okay, so eight a.m. Thursday. Thursday morning. When I get in at eight o'clock in the morning, it'll be in my inbox. Yes. yes. And oh. please see for people that work at night. Please see yeah. both yeah. of us because yeah. if one of us gets hit by a bus. Yes. <sighs> I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure at ten o'clock I'm going to leave here. Okay. Um, 
We're now on to attorney's report update on agreements with WSDOT and the Village of East Troy for the State Trunk Highway, State Road 20 project. Yes, I've been in communication with you. You've been in communication with the Village of East Troy as to what changes are necessary on the intergovernmental agreement. Great. I have modified the state slash municipal maintenance agreement here that I'll pass down to you. I would suggest that you don't sign this yet until we have approved the village's modified intergovernmental agreement. But once we approve that, this that is what we'll be signing, not the original that was sent to us. So that's the update on that. Okay. Uh, update on records, retention, research. I guess you did some of this already. I sent an email to the board. Um, I heard back from the Historical Society regarding uh, video and audio mediums, 90 days. That's what they said is required for record retention. That's my update on That's that. it. Okay. Uh, and next, what? I just need authorization regarding the... Uh, Foot launch parking fee ordinance. Okay. I'd like to authorize Attorney Mills to update the ordinance for new fees at the boat launch. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing Do we need to define what the fees are for you? Or you're going to make that at your discretion? Or? No, wasn't he going to check with someone? No. Uh, no NR 191 dictates what uh, can be charged. So not to exceed. Up to the max is what we're going to put yes. Okay. yes, and it's going to be probably less than we want, but it's going to be the max that the statute that we can, will, charge. That we can charge. So right. for all fees, we're going to adjust? I think Jim's look at all of them so we can see if we're still in compliance with where we're at now. I think we did it. Well, we're in compliance because we're below the max. That's right. It's not going down. It always goes up. So, But that'll be looked at, too. And just to make sure that it's all. I'll just up everything, and then you can tell me. I'll no. show you what it was, and here's the max. Right. And you just tell me if you like it or not. Right. So then that means we have to change the newsletter right. because we have all the yeah. fees included well, in the newsletter. Well, that may be that may be the number, but like I said, the, okay. we're authorizing him today, and Todd also needs that for the other part of it that we're doing, but it's not. Then all the signs. Yeah. Sign What's your deadline sign. on the newsletter? I don't know. Well, we're meeting again on the 24th, so we were going to we get it mailed out by May, yeah. I, we'll know by then, right? Well, I just won't put it on my attorney report until June. There we go. <laughs> so then we'll say, when we not. published it, they <laughs> were the current rates. I mean, and we're selling annual boat passes, too, at the old rates. So are we going to change that? I think that everything is printed and all that type of stuff. I think there would be no reason to do that part. The thing is, we're establishing the new spaces. We don't have that established at all, so we have to because we're going to be doing it. Right, but we don't have to update. No, we don't have to. But when Jim's looking at it, he could say, hey, we're behind the times here. Next year, let's change that. the max. Right, right. Because it never goes down. It always goes up. So, Okay. Uh, so we had a motion and a second on that, and the discussion, I think we're done. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Can okay. I just one more question, sorry? Yep. So then are we publishing them in the newsletter because that's what they are today when the newsletter is going out? Well, like I said, we're going we're gonna to probably know. We keep them as they are now. Mm -hmm. Because the board hasn't approved any right. changes. Ever. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to put it in. Yeah, I put it in. What it is at the time of publishing. The one we need to know are the new, new spaces. Right. So we don't know what we're going to charge, but that will be a change this year. The other ones will decide once everything else is printed. Could be. Could be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No trail. Okay. Public comments period number two. Anyone, John? I'd like to talk briefly about the uh, records retention. Um, I want to thank Chairman Tarkowski. Uh, him and I spent 45 minutes on the phone approximately 
talking about record retention and uh, talking about what transpired at the annual meeting a few years ago. And uh, I sent them links to the meetings. I gave them a link to my YouTube channel that shows all 300 videos that I have out there. And uh, the viewership, I have some meeting, uh, some videos that have 1,200 views on them. I have some that have 50 views. I have some that have 100. That uh, really is topic uh, sensitive, how many views you're gonna get depending on what the topic is. Um, if we're gonna spend all this money on cameras, microphones, all your time, all my time sitting over there, uh, I think we should do the taxpayers of the township a favor and give them more than 90 days of retention. Uh, my stuff's going to be there. I'm going to keep recording until I can't record anymore. So my stuff will be there, but I think if we're going to be a professional operation, um, we need to have the retention so that it's there for long-term use. So just to make sure if somebody questions something or if you get into a lawsuit or something or something happens, you can go back and find out exactly what was said, who said it on the date they said it, so that it's clear. Because without the, the ability to go back and look, it's just, you know, I think that's what was said. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't know. So um, we're putting all this effort and all this time into it. I think that we should do the taxpayers this favor and um, have it for seven years like everyone else. And I'm going to go over to Village of McGuinnessville. I'm going to go to Village of East Troy, and I'm going to ask them if they could give it to me in writing what they do for retention. And I'm going to bring that to the board because it's going to be coming up on the agenda here in the future. And I know from personal experience when I was on the ad hoc committee for the township here for communications, I went down to Muskego and they used YouTube and they hold everything for seven years. Thank you. You're doing it. <clears throat> Mr. Jones. I was hoping to get out without having to have comments. <laughs> <laughs> Long meeting leaves comments. Um, <sighs> the first thing we were talking about. Um, the YouTube page and things. What I've felt being part of the communications committee is there's been two organizations doing two independently things instead of working together. And that means the town employees and the communications committee. And I thought the ad hoc committee suggested that the communications committee should champion getting this all put together. And so what I would just ask is, can we work together as we're doing the testing? I mean, do real testing and work together instead of having independent activities. Uh, the budget for any of the equipment that's in here, I thought was part of the communications budget, right? So how this money was spent, I asked Michelle and she said, she doesn't have an itemized list, so if there's a way to get an itemized list to the communications committee, that would be helpful. Um, two, with regard to Taylor uh, Computer Services, it's already voted on the server. A server is not a hardware device, necessarily. A server can be a partition in a hard disk. It can be multiple hard disks in a, in a box. Um, I have concerns with what I've heard. Um, why aren't we going out to bid on this with three bidders, like we just did with all these other? Why don't we put a spec together, like we didn't have for Keiko, and that's why we had that discussion. You know, um, I, a lot of questions in what I heard. I don't know what you're getting. I'm not an expert, but what I heard, I'm concerned. The last thing is uh, parking fees. Gene and I worked on that Beulah Boat launch thing, and I thought six weeks ago, if not two months ago, we said we were gonna keep the fees. That was my understanding. Yes, so that's why we went forward with all this. So I would just caution, and, and if you change the uh, vehicle only, and that goes higher than the other one, you're going to have a lot of questions, I think. We, we, we match them $8 a piece. So I just be cautious about trying to make changes at this late stage. This well, we have to follow the law, too. That's why we authorized him. Uh, no, no, uh, I know. We but hope it's going to be that. As long as we're below, we could leave the old ones, and that was the discussion yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two, yeah. two months ago. I think we'd be fine. I do. Thank you.
Any other public comments? We good? Okay. Oh, we're getting on a record here. Okay. Um, license and special event permits. I have a question for that. Oops. Shoot. Can, can you read all of them and then I make a motion and then we can all vote on it or does it have to be individually read? Operators, on operators. So the, the first two need to be yes. separate. Okay. And then <laughs> the rest can be a bulk. A bulk? Okay. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. The first one is a operator's license for Stephanie Perer. Um, I would recommend that the board approve it pending her background check be completed. I move that we approve Second. the <laughs> operator's license for Stephanie for your dependent on her background check. All right, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Who was aye. the second? Aye. Bill. Bill. Okay, I didn't hear it. Sorry. It was instantaneous. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is an operator's license for Lance Rose, Rosenmeyer. Um, his is a renewal and there are no issues. I move that we approve Lance Rosenmeyer's second. operator's license. Bill second. Discussion? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. We have special events permits for Tom Vander Borgart for the Lake Beulah Protective and Improvement Association for Burns Park on May 13th. The next one is for Gary Elliott for a memorial service at Burns Park on May 20th. Um, the third one is Sarah Br Brickio a graduation party at Burns Park on June 10th. Um, Tim Lang, a regatta at the Lake Villa Yacht Club, June 26th and June 28th through the 30th. Um, Caroline Tarzak, another regatta at the Lake Villa Yacht Club on July 21st through July 23rd. And Todd Shield, a children's Ooh. birthday party at Burns Park on August 6th. <laughs> I make a motion that, uh, to approve all of those. Second. All right, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Most carries. <laughs> all right. We have a couple meetings here. Figure out where my calendar is. Meetings. Meetings. Uh, again, Beach Road Bridge, we have to determine as a board where we want to go with that agreement, purchase, et cetera. And then also, uh, we tabled this one already too long, and that's the one about the uh, uh, contracting for the town's mission, vision statement, and strategic plan. Um, I would, we have uh, probably other legal issues that could be at the closed meeting with the uh, Beach Road one. I was so, gonna say, yeah, it's, the, uh, I know it's not in the, the notice of claim. Yes. Yes, and that'd be a closed session deal anyway, so we have to notice that. So, um, it's spring now, so everybody's getting busy outside, but we have to figure out where we could fit in uh, a meeting. I think that would be one meeting, uh, because I don't think the um, either one of them is going to exceed a half an hour. Even if it's an hour, it'd still be one meeting. Uh, so, for which ones are you asking? What? Uh, for the schedule of the meeting for Beach Road and then the town mission vision statement discussion on where we're going as a town. Whether we're doing one or not. Whether we're doing one or we're going to hire a consultant or just do it ourselves, whatever. We have to discuss that totally to see yeah. where, where we want to go with that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, if I may, I, I would assume we're doing one because we've already passed a motion to leave the process. When was that? Was that, in, Fe was that in February when no, I was here? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember. I, don't remember passing the I copied it. It's in this pile somewhere. Um, I think there should be a considerate or not considerate. Yeah, there was a motion to do it. I thought at that meeting you were going to bring your contact to the communications committee, and I think that's all that happened. But that's all the request was. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
April 22nd is the first day that the Congo site will be open. April 22nd is from 8 to 1 until the the board at the firehouse. April 24th, Communications Committee. May 1st and 15th, Communications Committee. May 3rd and 17th, Planning Commission. May 6th, 92 is the <coughs> cycle at the Town Hall. May 8th is the next Town Board meeting. May 17th is the next Big Lake Memorial Park meeting. And May 29th, the Town Hall will be closed for Memorial Day. All right. Calendars. I'm already looking for oh. something else. And May, or April 17th is for Columbus. When was the last <laughs> one? Michelle's birthday is the 17th. Next Monday. Next Monday. <laughs> That's why there's not a communications committee next Monday. <laughs> okay. And of course, next week we have uh, the annual meeting. That's the only thing I see out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What? And Booth Lake on Wednesday. Was the annual meeting at last year's approved for 6.30? Yes. Or is it at 7? 6.30. Yes, okay. Yeah. yeah, time and place was mm -hmm. approved. So I'm thinking after that, um, 20th. We're looking for the Beach Road Bridge. Yep. Correct. And uh, whether whatever we're doing with the, with with the vision. town mission vision strategic plan, per per the motion that was done two weeks ago. Okay. Yes. I have a class. You have a class. Yep. Twenty first or twentieth. Twentieth. Okay. Nineteenth after four thirty. But that's a day after the annual meeting. I don't know if you're going to be up we to it. Like we have Booth Lake, Lake then. Okay. Yeah. Following week. Uh, I'm kind of open that whole week, the 24th to the 28th. I'm on vacation. Do you have vacation? I'm on the 26th. From when to when? From the 20th to the 28th. Vacation weekend. And what are you? I'm not available on the 25th or the 27th. Okay, so that week's The 24th is communication committee. 24th communications. That leaves the 26th for me. For what we're doing there, if... Kim is gone, Jean could cover, correct? On both of those issues, I don't think it has to be you. Except for the closed session. Can you do that? I so, can make her aware of I thought you did. Session. I thought you did one. Mm -hmm. I've done closed sessions. Yeah. yeah, but the issue. I know. Yeah. And okay. I was at the last one also. Okay. All right, 24th, you got a communications. 25th? I'm not available. Not available. 26th after 4.30? I'm available. 26th? 26th? Yeah, it worked for me. Available? 26th? 4.30 to 6.30? At 4.30. At 4.30? At 4.30? What do you got? Can we do Pardon? You, you're available or not yes. available? You are. At 4.30. At 4.30. At 4.30, yeah. 4.30, I'm going to roughly say 6.30. That would be the longest it could take. All right, and we'll cover both those at the same time. Uh, also, notice of claim, we'll, we'll review that one too. Since April 26th at 4.30. Correct. Town board special. Okay, that's all we have on the agenda, and it's after 10 o'clock. I move we adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn and pay bills. We have a second. second. Michelle, second. All favor say aye. 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 More carries. John, you outlasted everybody. You're the, you're the last public member here. We're going to sign checks. You're welcome to watch us. I'll never last.